you. Yes, I'm talking to you. You are sitting at a corner table at Brex of Kin, the charming little bistro in Ghost Town, where you recently had your brunch crashed by the enigmatic civil servant who's been checking in on you now and then, ever since your arrival in the afterlife. You'd return this morning in hopes of encountering this gentleman again and hearing the culmination of the Skull Tender's adventure in Scrubfuck with Hazel, the hyena-faced teenage mare, Dylan Pickleman, the incalculably wise and charismatic sentient pickle barrel, and Scarlet Sizzlefingers, the bandit ghost with the eyes of a chameleon and a scorpion tail for an arm. You've been waiting quite a while, actually, and the warmth and gentle conversation in the Brex of Ken is beginning to make you feel rather sleepy. Visk. Oh, who goes there? It's been some time since the adventure in Scrubfuck. Oh, it's the narrator, right. You don't quite remember how that resolved, but it doesn't seem really important right now. Uh, you're somewhere, and you're reading a book. Before we get to the book, where are you? So Visk sits cozily in the after library. Uh, this is the building which houses all of history's documents, which can be seen from the south-facing windows of Town Hall. And they're sitting in a large and stately leather chair. Despite its ancient and stony exterior, the interior of this library is warm and welcoming. Mahogany furniture and rich drapes adorn the massive yet intimate interior, and plush carpets and rugs line the floor in layers that absorb any disturbing noises that may occur nearby. A fire crackles in the nearby fireplace, but it's mostly for ambiance, as the majority of the reading light is coming instead from hovering lights of magical origin. It's as if fireflies were more helpful creatures than they actually are. Literature from every era lines every shelf, from papyrus to bound tomes to newspapers to paperbacks. The smell of old books and coffee from the cafe that operates within the library mingles together pleasantly. It gives a vibe of either sleepy or studious, depending on what your mood and intention is. Visk is drinking tea from that cafe. That's something they've wanted to do for a while drink stuff and actually taste it. It reminds Visk of the grass outside Veilgard Mausoleum. Their ocular organs scan the opening paragraphs of Introduction to Magic, the pages of which have a weight that denotes authority in the subject matter. Oh yeah, it's uh, it seems like a much better copy than the one you found uh, in Scrubfuck. Uh, for one thing, it is much more informative, and for another, it's written in Epitung, the language of the dead. Ooh. Why don't you give us a little, a little peek over your shoulder? What's it say on that page? What we broadly call magic can be divided into two diametrically opposed schools, biomancy and necromancy. Biomancy is the magic of altering an organism's biological processes. Biomancers are able to tap into these systems to redirect energy or give a body new instructions in order to achieve a desired effect. Biomancers make skilled doctors, coaxing the body to heal or regrow damaged tissue and missing bones, stop sending pain signals, or target a viral infection at its source. Biomancers are best known for the animal-human hybrids they create, which are the result of biomancers drawing on existing blueprints in the natural world. Though the results achieved by biomancy seem fantastical, they are limited by the hard realities of biological necessity. Teaching a human body to grow enormous wings does nothing to affect the physics of aerodynamics, and the resulting hybrid would be unable to comfortably achieve flight without also hollowing its bones, shrinking its organs, etc., in order to achieve something like breathing fire, a biomancer must grow a throat sac filled with a flammable organic liquid, powerful lungs to spew the liquid, and some sort of flint and steel teeth to ignite the liquid. A diligent biomancer might also toughen the skin of their face to prevent burning their eyelids off. Necromancy has no such restrictions. A necromancer simply rewrites reality as they see fit, using the unparalleled energy of the soul as fuel. If a necromancer wished to fly or breathe fire, they could simply spend some of the energy of the soul, commonly called soul power, and spew a great gout of flame from their face or take off into the sky. However, the power is not persistent as it is in biomancy. The necromancer in flight is continually burning soul power to make gravity forget to notice them. When they stop, they fall. The greatest risk a necromancer faces is the consumption of their own soul. 
Long-lived necromancers are typically those who have found an alternative source of soul power, though rarely a willing one. Felicity! Yes? You're back in the Grand Theater, watching the performance of Oedipus T-Rex. It's a tragedy about the last days of the Saurians, of people who discovered the bones of giant ancient lizards and tried to become them using biomancy, ultimately leading to their own extinction. Uh, it's the end of Act 3, you've seen this before, and the Scale King's court biomancer is trying to convince the king to stop. Uh, he's, he's up there uh, pacing back and forth in front of the king. He looks a little bit familiar to you. Great Scale King, there are limits to what biomancy can do. I can only change, modify, but what is left must stand on its own. If I were to make you 40 feet tall as you ask, you would be unable to stand upright. And the energy requirements to maintain such a form. You will need to be eating entire little pigs every day. Uh, the, the Scale King, as he's addressed, is stomping around the stage. Both of his hands are drawn up to his chest with the palms forward and, the, and two fingers pointing up. He's taking like exaggerated stomps, uh, but he otherwise looks like a normal human, except his skin is green. Felicity, make a performance check. Critical fail. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, so you've seen this play performed somewhere before, and but you can't remember the details. You do know that Oedipus T-Rex is classically performed with no prosthetics or makeup or biomancy for the performers. Uh, it's meant to be commentary on how the biomancy procedures that happen between acts don't affect the Scale King's essential nature as a tyrant, but just make it more apparent. It also puts the spotlight on the Scale King's performance, which is supposed to be a chance for an actor to showcase their skills by selling the gradual transformation into a huge lizard monster through acting alone. You know, like as their performance changes, you, you understand that they're changing, but they don't, they're not typically painted green like this guy is. It's a little gauche and crass, but uh, probably plays better in this town. For a one... For your critical fail, uh, you sneeze super loud. <laughs> the court biomancer on the stage stops and like looks. You completely break uh, the act. Uh, you can feel a lot of eyes on you as you uh, sink down into your chair. Dudu, hi. It's a beautiful night. And you're driving your van. Can you tell me what that looks like? Uh, well, the moon is out. There's a moon in the ghost world, right? Oh, this is, you're not in the ghost world. Oh, never mind. Is it, you're back on the road, baby. You're just driving I'm around. back on the road. Yeah, don't worry about oh, it. Oh, yeah, the moon is full. It feels so good. Not a cloud in the sky. I'm driving my old van, which once belonged to my pal Jerry. Jerry Fuddruckers Kennedy. I, all right. I didn't he, know. uh, huh? <laughs> no, no, please don't let me stop you, please. He left me his van... And it's what I l pretty much live in as well. Um, I was I, I was raised in this van. It's it kind of an old, beat up, you know, just utility, unmarked white van. But Jerry wanted to, you know, he was more one with nature, and as was I. So he, we, uh, Jerry had a great idea to to just paste patches of astroturf all over the van. <laughs> Just all over it, so we'd have a nice grassy knoll to just sort of lean on and sit next to oh, at Jesus. any given moment in our lives. That 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 un that fucking uh, unominous geographical fig figure. Uh, yeah, sometimes you just want to sit in a. We have a per, we have a, a we all, anywhere I go, I got a place to chill. That's what that's what the van was supposed to be, the old grassy knoll. So I was just uh, you know. Going down, yeah. Going down the highway on my on in, in the grassy knoll. Excellent. Uh, it doesn't go very fast. It is a, it is a bad. It, like, look, we can only do so much to make this van twenty five yeah. miles an hour tops. Yeah, that like some of the biological parts under the hood are getting a little older. But you know, there's some sentimentality. But you know what? I ain't going anywhere in a hurry. I just like to vibe. In fact, as you're as you're traveling along, uh, you see on the side of the road. Uh, oh shit! Uh, there is something in flames. Whoa! Holy shit! Piss! Yeah, as you're pulling <laughs> up, uh, make a uh, investigation check while not slowing down. Well, I'm, I'm going 25, so it's not that bad. Shit! Uh, 12. Good enough. Uh, <laughs> it looks like an exploded train car. Uh, Kind of familiar. You actually see a bird perched on it with its wing out like it's hitchhiking. 
right there by the side of the road. I slow to a to an easy ten miles an hour. All right, and uh, get a get a load of this. Well, it's it's an on fire. It's something on fire. I, I got to get a load of this, but uh, doing some good old rubbernecking. <laughs> Oh yeah, so it's fully uh, it's the it's the locomotive from the Midnight Special, just completely exploded to shit. And the bird with its arm out, oh, it's that desert owl that you that you were. He he makes eye contact with you as you close and kind of tilts his head like going my way, bud. Hey, I I fully stopped when I noticed the owl looking at me. Hey, you you can't park there, I don't think. He, he flaps over uh, to the uh, rear passenger door and just kind of like gets his little talons in there on the thing and it's kind of like pecking on the window. Uh, it still has that hand, that hitchhiking hand out. Oh, he had a big old thumb, yeah. Well, I got one of those too, buddy. Get on in here. I, but I have to. Uh, I have to lean over to because it's it's a it's a shitty old van, so it only has. Yeah, it's got the rollers. This isn't a. It's got name. the rollers, yeah. and it only has, uh, well, four doors: uh, the one in the back, the drivers, the passenger, and like the like the huge door on the side. You know, whatever. You yeah, want to the call hatch. It. The hatch. So I, uh, due to leans over and has to, uh, with great pressure, the hands like I'm also juggling, <laughs> keeping my uh, my foot on the. Uh, on the brake because I have not parked. Does this not have park? <laughs> I just didn't. I just didn't oh, okay. park. So <laughs> no, I, I mean, you. it's a clap because like we're probably going to be going as soon as he gets in. That's yeah. The it's, idea. it's a drive-through drive-through rules. I so you. I'm just like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna roll that down for you. There. All right. He he uh, hops in and just settles down in the back seat. Is there a back seat? Are there seats in this van, or is it... There's some things in the back he could sit on, yeah. Boxes, uh, my bed, things like that. Okay, cool. He perches on one of the boxes, and, uh... Okay. You just, uh, keep driving? You wanna come up here, little man? I'm, like, patting the, the, the passenger side. Uh, uh, as you pat the passenger side, you, your hand feels cold, and the owl gives you a little shake. Shake of the head. Just stares ahead. Well, all right, then. I just go. I just keep going. It's a beautiful night still. Uh, you drive a little bit more. You pull away. You get away from that fire. You know, things that, like less smoke, less sound of an exploded train car. The owl is not talking. If you glance back now and then, it's just sort of still staring ahead. Uh, drive a little bit more, and uh, you see what looks like a dead body on the side of the road. Whoops. Hmm. But this one's got another owl perched by it. Wow. He's got his wing out. Two fares in one night, huh? Is that your friend? Ask the owl in the back. Uh, he's staring straight ahead. All right, I uh, I pause. You know what? I fully stop next to the dead man because I'm like, "Hey, Mister, you need any help?" He, without acknowledging that, swoops in and settles next to the other owl, and you recognize him as the owl that you inhabited when you went to the uh, Veilguard Mausoleum. And with that knowledge, you look back and realize that the exploded body on the side of the road is Felicity's. And they're both, they both just stare straight ahead. You remember, oh yeah, she died. She died at the end of that one. Am I aware I'm in a dream? Uh, not yet. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, you can be. You can be, sure. You could, you could absolutely question your reality at present. Sorry, that wasn't fair. You tell me. Yeah, it's one of those things where he's like, you know, dream logic. I sort of just accept things, like picking up owls. You could ask the owls. <laughs> hey, owls. They both in simultaneously look straight at you. Where are you headed? They look ahead. They look back to down the road. Sounds good to me. And I keep driving. All right. Uh, keep driving for a little bit further. Uh, you come across, again, uh, the burning wreckage of a motorcycle. There are horse legs and human body parts scattered around, but no head. Uh, gray and yellow city owl uh, sits perched with its wing out. You recognize it as the owl that you inhabited on your last adventure. I slow down a little bit and I signal, "Get in here, you little silly Billy." This is a city owl. He doesn't need he doesn't need to be told twice. He just swoops right in. The window, yeah. yeah. You know how to get in here. Come on. Yeah, as he as he swoops in, uh, well, I'm collecting them all this time. Almost. Uh, and you turn, and in the passenger seat is a vulture. Hello. I wanted to talk to you. Well, we had a minute. All right. How's it going? You look familiar. 
Yeah, you're riding my body right now like you're riding this van. And I was I was just hoping possibly maybe I could have an ending that was different from these three fellas. And he like gestures back with his head. At, and as he does, you turn around, and you see that all three of these owls are dead. The owl from the Veilguard mausoleum has a bloody lung dangling out of its beak. It's swaying softly with the motion of the van. Oh, well, all three were exploded or burned or various when you when you got done with them. They did that's not. That's uh, true. I, I I just don't know. I uh, look. I'll do my best, sir. That's all I can ask for. But just, sometimes you know, it, it kind of gets out of hands. Hey, man, I'm a vulture. I know about things getting out of hand. You know, I'm not too precious about. Well, I, I can only try. Oh, that's all I'm asking. Tell you what, you want to just keep driving? I don't see why not. Let's just hang out. Okay. All right. Felicity. Yes? You are deep into the final act of Oedipus T-Rex, and it has gone fully off the rails. Uh, The actor playing the Scale King has uh, completely abandoned the minimalist makeup and prosthetics approach. Uh, His skin is now covered in thick, knobbled green scales, and he's off script. He's, instead of stomping around in a tragic rage, he's just standing silently in center stage alone. Uh, His eyes are yellow with slitted pupils, which you can easily see because he is making direct eye contact with you. And you realize suddenly that there is no one else here. You're alone in the theater, front row, center. Uh, Felicity makes eye contact back and stares back uncomfortably, sort of nervously squeezing and loosening her grip on the hands of the seat she is sitting in. Madame Fairweather, took me a long time to find you. He's pointing a clawed finger at you and starts walking towards you. Uh, And as as he's getting closer, you can see the large teeth, like blunt spikes that poke out of his mouth even when it's closed. You already saw the show, now how about dinner? And with that, he lunges from the stage, landing right in front of you. Make a dexterity saving throw. 16. Okay. Uh, he grabs you by the foot, but you are able to, uh, like, pull yourself up and get a handle on his, and, like, grab onto his hand so you're not just dangling at the end of his grip. Uh, but you are lifted up into the air out of your seat. Uh, and he is trying to position his, uh, he's trying to position, like, your knee and your foot so that he can hold your leg like a corn cob. And he opens his jaws real wide to bite right down to just bite your fucking leg off again. And there is nothing, there's nothing, and there's nothing, and Misk, you are still reading Introduction to Magic. Uh, You are in a particularly interesting section about ghosts. Ooh, this will be relevant. Though there are many and various means by which a soul might intentionally or unintentionally persist in the land of the living past the expiration of its living vessel, one of the strangest is that of the undying legend. These ghosts are those who in life achieved great lasting acclaim or notoriety in their field to the point that said acclaim became their entire reason for being. The hunger for fame and validation chains their spirits to the stages and arenas that were their places of power, calling them forth when a sufficient crowd gathers. These spirits may take the form of a long-dead gladiator, appearing in the melee before a packed coliseum. A prima donna might appear on stage before a full house, hungry for the approval they subsisted on in life. As these appearances are universally disruptive and frightening, they rarely elicit the audience approval that sustained the legend in life, and the ghost shifts to a new diet of fear and submission. Exorcising an undying legend is difficult, but not impossible, to begin simply... And you suddenly have a hard time paying attention or reading because there's a skeletal parrot with black beak, green winged feathers, and a small black tiara on her head, perched on the pages like a reading light. Oh, 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 Blanchette, hello. Honey, are you having a fantasy about reading? Uh, I'm, I'm just reading. What are you talking about? This is, this is a dream. You, you dream, you're dreaming that you're at the library? Oh no, wait, this is the after, wait, where is this? This ain't, where are we? Uh, the library, right? Yeah. I've never been there. Wait, I've never been here. Right, that's right. You're in a dream, remember? We sent you, we sent you to take care of the thing? 
Vis takes a sip of tea and it tastes like pickle juice. Oh. Wait a minute. Wait. What? Yeah, we sent you. You remember we got the message from the, we got the pickle. Didn't love that. Showed up, uh, came out of the river, asking for help. Right. Treating the, treating the afterlife like it's somebody that's on call. We don't love that. I said, we, we sent you, they wanted help. Yeah, you're going to take care of that. But remember, you got to take care of whatever did that. Remember? Did I not do that? No, and you you now remember the events of the previous day. It's a little dreamy, it's a little sleepy, but it's like, yeah, it's like... Oh. Yeah. I guess this one's like an overnighter, huh? I just want to make you, you sure you got your eye on the prize here, the, pick, the pickle guy. Oh, yes, of course. Very suspicious. I talked to the mayor about it. He's pretty, he's pretty adamant. Oh, well, uh, anything he wants, of, co- of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not to be called by a pickle generally no yes that is not the correct uh <laughs> that is not something that should happen all right how, how are the other two doing oh you know i can't i can't see their dreams i just it's just you 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 can see wait you're not are you you am i not dreaming are you you, are you both yeah both things are true what or just uh, yeah i'm always in your head you know oh my god it's all connected down here just us though not the other two this is like cradling their their head in their gooey hands, like, oh my god, I can never be alone. <laughs> Honey, do you, yeah, don't don't you ain't gotta be embarrassed. Do you know what birds are mostly thinking about? I don't know. <laughs> Whether they eat that they that they either want to fuck or take a shit, and it's all the same hole. Uh it, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> or lay an egg. Is is it all the same hole? I don't know. Yep. In in our world, every single bird has a cloaca. <laughs> mm, I think it's pronounced cloaca. Not in our world. In our world, it's cloaca. It's fantasy. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, I think it's time for you to wake up. I think it is. And with that, uh, you wake up. Ugh. Ugh. Huh? And like this kind of like pops their head out of the four gallon hat. They're liquid otherwise, but just their head is popping out and they're groggy. Yeah, there's a actually a note uh, perched on the brim that says, come out back when you wake up. Uh, what? Huh? Every, nobody else is still around. What? Well, huh? What? The d- you're in your little hat. You're in uh, the sheriff station turned mayor's office, where Hazel hangs his hat. But yeah, that's this is where you this is where you went to sleep after you went to the show after you all got attacked yesterday by Scarlet Sizzlefinger. Uh, and you got a little note telling you to head up back. God, what time is it? And Visk, like, you know, pulls themselves together and puts their little booties on and stuff like that, that they still don't know how to walk in. You actually hear the extremely loud sound of a chicken balking from behind. And you, you, there's some sun dabbling in through the bars. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't see, it's, it's early morning yet. I have a hard time believing those two louts woke up before me. Maybe they were having trouble sleeping. You know, I haven't slept, like... What was that? Seven hours in a row? Wow. I feel like I've slept for three weeks or something. Anyway, talking to myself. Let's go. Yes, let's. I'm here to... Oh, my God. Right. Yes, it's me. Judicious. Yes. We met yesterday. Hello. Yes, it's your new gun. (laughs) (laughs) It's your new gun that you received yesterday that you can only fire at someone who you believe deserves to die oh right you're my gun that's right i'm jude your gun what what's a gun is it short for something not are you a guy that's fun absolutely not i don't enjoy that (laughs) oh well (laughs) i'll work with that concept of fun (laughs) I'm, i'm generally opposed to fun (laughs) <laughs> it's often done in flouting of the rules and regulations that maintain a society. There's certainly ways to have fun within the rules, aren't there? I wouldn't know. I was created, refused to do something bad, and then placed in a box <laughs> for 50 years. 50? Good lord. Possibly longer, I didn't have a calendar. Mm, understandable. I only had... My ability to count seconds. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I guess you're not a fun guy. <laughs> that You know what? I take it back. Counting the time is very fun. Let's continue. One, <laughs> two, three, four. So correct me if I'm wrong, but when you introduced yourself, did you say you were part of the personality of that horrible train man? Yes, that's correct. Maximilian Buckworth right. drew his own sense of justice out of himself mm. and placed it in an otherwise 
inconspicuous hunk of metal. All right. And that's me. But I refuse to kill on his command because I'm a sense of justice. Well, a very complicated man. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, I look forward to our future budding relationship. Hope I can teach you about fun, maybe. Oh, yes. I look forward to learning. Wait, fun? Did you say fun? I thought you said gun. <laughs> <laughs> they can be both things, I think. Hmm. I don't know a ton about fun either, in retrospect. I don't know. We'll learn together. I make no promises to learn, ever. <laughs> but I will accompany you. Wow. All right, what's up? Who needs to be killed? What is sup? I don't know what's up. Let's go outside and where we've been. Sounds uh, good. Where we've been summoned. <laughs> All right, uh, as you uh, step out the front door and head around the back, uh, you almost run into the Catalian school teacher you saw yesterday, who is again leading a little line of perfect human children down the street. Uh, each of the children is holding a partially eaten pickle. Uh, as you head around to the back, you find a corral. Uh, you don't know what a corral is. It's a... It's just a round fence back here. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it was put together recently from railroad ties. Uh, Dudu and Felicity are watching as Hazel, the hyena-faced mayor of Scrubfuck, wearing his trademark top hat made uh, of straw and his overalls and his mayoral sash and his fucking eye patch. I guess I gave this character a lot of signifiers, sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, and he has a hyena face. No, that's character design, baby. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, he's got a lot of memorable little, little signifiers. Uh, he is <laughs> pulling unshucked ears of corn from a burlap sack and tossing them to a nine foot tall chicken. This, uh, in front of him. Uh, Felicity and Doodoo are just kind of sitting on the fence, and they both look like they had a rough night's sleep. Wait a root and tootin' moment. You have corn? I, I thought the only thing here was pickles. Oh, no, I mean, we got, I got, I got, I got feed corn. That was easy to get. People bring it, and then they sell their animals. I, I told you we're trying to rebuild the giga chicken population. Uh, I said, we, it's mostly me and Gardenia here. Uh, but we're, you know, we got hope. I mean, the eggs aren't fertilized, so, you know, <laughs> we don't, I'm hoping one day we get a rooster. That's the dream. Yeah. God. To have a perfect cock. <laughs> <laughs> he's just kind of, he's like, this is why I can't get one. I'm embarrassed to ask. I'm, I'm afraid to be made. I'm afraid it'll <laughs> diminish my civic authority. That's why you need a second in command to ask stupid questions. <laughs> like me. Doo-doo. The, uh, what am I again? An eagle? I'm saying a vulture. I'm a vulture. Hmm. I don't. I'm tired. Sorry. No, I mean I I I, I I I didn't sleep too good either. I was, you know. Were you on a guilt trip also? No, I was mostly just afraid about getting killed today because I'm the sort of a logical last target, you know. Mm. Seeing as I have, I got the only place that hadn't been robbed yet or abandoned. Mm. Yeah. Right. What you feeling guilty about? Y'all y'all seem like heroes to me. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Eh. I've got my own troubles. High praise from the mayor. Fair enough. I suppose it was a pretty invasive question. Yeah, it kind of, yeah. <laughs> then again, you opened that door, so for, for more fool me for trying to stroll through it. <laughs> anyway, they, y'all hungry? Yeah, that sounds wonderful. I would Starving. love to. I don't know. Felicity sort of like pushes up her hat, which has been over her uh, her weary eyes. It's like, yes, that sounds absolutely lovely. I would love to. Do you think that's not a pickle, actually? I know that's faux pas, maybe. It, no, no, no. Don't worry. That's uh, I'm I'm right there with you. So here's the thing. So I, you know, this this corn. You don't want to eat this corn, but uh, Gardenia. Usually, I have to wait until she's full and asleep. But while I'm while I'm giving her these, can somebody maybe sneak over there and get a get a get one of them one of them eggs from her nest? And there is a uh, over there in the corner of the crowd. There is a. Uh, a little straw nest with three bright yellow eggs, each easily the size of a child's head. Oh, you don't have to tell me twice to get eggs. All right, uh, make a stealth check, doo-doo. <laughs> I just want, to, just want to run over there. All right, you can try that, too. The doo-doo just goes for it, just walks. Just like, oh, boy. All right, makes uh, kind of too much noise, he, clapping his hands together, <laughs> looking at it like, you know, looking at like a juicy steak on a desert island. Yeah, uh, like, you... There's like a, a quick rustle and then like a fucking nine foot tall chicken is like standing right in front of you, scratching the ground and like bobbing her head in your face. Hmm. Gardenia, no, 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 that ain't food. That ain't food. That ain't food. He's like, uh, Hazel is trying to distract her with a, uh, 
with a with one of them ears of corn again. Oh, I should be a little more careful. Dudu says, tapping the side of his beak. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, sorry, I, I guess I wouldn't make that clear. If somebody wanted to like, while we, or, you know, now would be great time. He says, like, dick, kind of bopping back and forth, holding up the ear of corn. Uh, Gardenia's eyes are going between the two of you. Don't worry, I got it. And the doo-doo makes a stealth check. Uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty high. <laughs> Felicity is, like, in a labored manner, pulling herself to her feet with the assumption that maybe she's going to need to do this after doo does not succeed. Will the 23 do it? I'll be goddamned. Uh, <laughs> Whoa! Doo-doo! That was holding on to that one. Yeah, no, uh, so... Saving my good rolls. So, as, uh, it's... Yeah, that corn is good, but, like... You have such a chill vibe about you that she you're communicating on an avian level. And she's like, Oh, this is this is simply a, a chill guy. I need worry not. That's her internal monologue, you'll never hear out loud. Uh, <laughs> and she she <laughs> turns her focus to uh, the possibly menacing Felicity who has just drawn herself up. And I and Dudu carefully uh, 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 quiet and quietly saunters. Yeah. Over to the three eggs. Yeah, Felicity starts to walk away from the direction Dudu is in, so that its <laughs> eyes will continue to follow me and not Dudu. Very good. Uh, make a performance check. Nat twenty. Okay. Uh, Nat twenty. Cool. We're hungry. She actually just starts like, like with like, uh, burr, burr, like, like kind of like a polite box, and is 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 watching your, watching how you're moving, and just kind of like entertained, like like a happy chicken. Hazel like looks behind her and says, "Only get one, huh? It's big. It's, we don't need more than one. That, that's my food for the week, man. I can't live on pickles. Mm. We only need one. Trust me." Fair enough. Uh, Dudu simply grabs one, but looks longingly at the other two. Yeah, well, well, you know, boy, what an omelet that would be. You want an omelet? All right, all right. Come on, let's get back inside. Come the on. world's biggest omelet. Dudu and Felicity, you clearly missed your calling. I don't think you'll <laughs> you're more suited to this than bounty hunting. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. Yeah, I didn't realize that that chicken entertaining was a career that I could do. Gardenia is now like uh, like lovingly rubbing her beak on the side of your face, oh. <laughs> like the side oh. of her beak, Felicity. Oh, you are so sweet. Oh. I'm, I'm stroking it softly. Her eyes are closed. Her horrible <laughs> reptilian eyes close. Hiding the egg underneath my Garth Brooks shirt. Which I'm yeah, still you're good. You look even more like Garth Brooks. <laughs> Someone's got a girlfriend. <laughs> to, about Gardenia and Felicity. Aww. Oh shit! Does that work? We can. Can you? No, probably not. That's probably going to look. It's a forbidden love, I'm afraid. But I appreciate the affection. You're such a sweetie. <laughs> I have seen a bunch of paperwork about these, and they're very dangerous, and I don't think you should have relations with them. What do you do at your job? Yeah, I'm Felicity curious. Felicity Start is follow, following them back. It's data management. I see a lot of data. What, do you work in, in the weird death division or something? It, the, a lot of people die real weird. You work in bum fights? <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of strange things across my day. I've been I've been working this job for ninety nine years. You have to remember what? <laughs> let's let's have a drink when you get back. I got to hear about these weird deaths. I'd love to attempt to drink. Yes. As y'all turn the corner, still talking, Gardenia tur- turns back and sees her nest with only two eggs in it and is completely unaffected because she can't count. She's fucking chicken. Uh, <laughs> anyway, y'all are heading back into the mayor's office. Uh, Hazel Lee Janney pulls a hot plate out from under the desk. Says, who wants who wants to help me cook an egg? Uh, Dudu hilariously pretends to give birth to the egg because it's still underneath his shirt. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. oh, just kidding. And I hand the egg over. No. <sighs> Classic Dudu moment. Yeah. I would be happy to help you cook this egg. That sounds lovely. Oh, all right. Excellent. Okay. Um, hold on. So what we do, and he, he's, Hazel starts taking you through the process. You know, you got, he's like, well, you see, the thing is this, this shell is tougher than you'd expect, but the yolk is waterier than you'd hope. Hmm. So you just got to, uh, and he pulls an ice pick out from under the desk and just jabs it into the egg and oh. a high pressure stream <laughs> sprays out from the egg onto the onto the hot plate and begins uh, sizzling wow onto the pan which is on the hot plate Ooh, fresh yep yep right we got it on tap here uh mm-hmm. the, the pickle in a jar on the desk brother, brother you sure you don't want a little relish for that omelet i got relish all around pickles for the omelet if you want them 
I think we're good. I turned the pickle off so we don't have to hear him anymore. Uh, yeah, just, how do you do? I, <laughs> I, I turn it around to where I think it's not facing us anymore. Yeah, it does. Uh, he, he, he's like tries to like turn in like he's like wiggling like somebody in zero gravity in the jar trying to turn around to it's still just pickle on the other side. <laughs> but he's apparently chosen a face. Mm. And uh, he's like, yeah, why don't you fucking take five, Dylan? I, I, not everything needs pickles in it. This is my grandma's recipe. Uh, he, he takes the jar off the desk and uh, puts it under the desk. He says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was probably rude. I just get, you know, it's, it's at a certain point, you know. Uh, totally, yes. I've had enough fucking pickles, you know. I'm starting to get dehydrated. Anyway. Reach into the crier. We understand having enough of the pickle man, but he seems to mean well. We just, we'll, we'll stop by and pretend to have a pickle later or something. Oh, yeah, you know, yes, it's true. you know, perhaps later we could uh, divide and conquer. And in fact, I have a few questions for the mayor here, and I assume you probably have some questions for Dylan. I wouldn't mind hmm. speaking to Dylan. Who's speaking to who? What's going on? Sorry, I got distracted by my omelet. Uh, he's starting to fold the egg into like a like a pretty rolled omelet. I was addressing the group, basically. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll just stick my eggs. Y'all go ahead. No, just, just everyone. Yeah, you know. uh, Fulst extends her finger so that uh, in, in like a, like, one moment motion to Visk so that we can see the omelet finish getting rolled. Uh, yeah, it looks beautiful. Like, uh, there's a lot of intelligence in those uh, weird little fingers. <laughs> wow. Uh, at, <laughs> it seems like it's not going to have any ingredients uh, until he starts rolling it, at which point he pulls out a jar full of black olives and he starts to scatter them in the omelet. He says, this is this shit's real good. Y'all are going to love this. Uh, just keeps adding black olives. Uh, oh, boy. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. Uh, he folds it up, and all right, it is a big omelet. Uh, that egg was big, and then it fluffed up even bigger. It's like uh, there is a, I don't know, what's a good uh, loaf of bread? Looks like a fucking loaf of bread. It's that big. Mm, real big. Mm. Uh, let wow. me just carve this up. Everybody want a piece? Yes, please. Absolutely. absolutely. I guess. All right, here we go. That occurred. I don't. Th he's looking around. He's like, oh, shit. I'm usually just cooking for myself. I don't think I have a knife. Anybody got. Uh, you know what? All right. Ricochet. A jagged black blade appears in your hand. Yes. What the? <laughs> I'm sorry if this is a little disrespectful. And I begin to cut the omelet with her. Just going to cut around the olives and oh, this is so cold. <laughs> when you cut the omelet, it's a little. The two pieces are slightly smaller than they should hey. be. <laughs> Swords can't eat. I, well, I, you, fuck you. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Asked and answered. That's all she had in the chamber. It's early. Yeah. All right, all right. Mission accomplished. Uh, yeah. Uh, she also did not sleep well last night. <laughs> All right, uh, oh, away now. And I kind of just like, she doesn't have a sheath for her sword. It usually just seems to dissipate when we're out of danger. And she just kind of like tosses it out of her hands to the side. Yeah, it clatters on the ground. She says, what the fuck? <laughs> That's for eating our omelet. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of I thought you were, I kind of thought you were going to disappear when I did that. Well, I don't disappear. You, you just usually die. <laughs> That's true. I get blown up. It's not the same as disappearing. You, you disappeared while I was asleep last night. No, I didn't. I was under the bed. You kicked me off the bed because you were having a nightmare. <laughs> Which I could see, by the way, weird. Yeah, it certainly was weird. Yeah. You could see that? You could... Wait. Excuse me. It's a little invasive, don't you think? Tell me about it. Uh, handling, we got omelet for Felicity, omelet for Doodoo, extra black olives for Visk, and less olives for me. I'm not... I don't really like them that much. Uh, he just digs in. <laughs> Uh, oh, that reminds me. I found some. Uh, he he pulls out a piece of paper. When I was uh, I was looking through them old uh, them wanted posters, he like gestures behind him. He says, "I found this." Shows a piece of paper that reads, uh, "Wanted, dead or alive, Scarlet Sizzlefinger, for grand larceny, theft, disruption of trade, and the murder of Rhymeshell personnel. Target is intelligent and should be considered lethal at close range. Bounty: one thousand smackaroos." And the rest of the poster is taken up by a black and white photograph of a woman with wild hair and a bandana covering most of her face, except for her horrible chameleon eyes. Uh, there's a blur where her right arm should be, and the photo's in an odd angle, which is weird until you read the dedication at the bottom, which says, for Todd, who gave his life in the taking of this photograph. <laughs> oh, God. Duty with a mouthful of omelet. That's the lady. 
Uh, is that a lot of smackaroos? It certainly is. I don't suppose this ransom is still available. As far as I can tell, a thousand smackaroos, it was never claimed. Hmm. Like, there's a re- there's records back here that say when, like, when a bounty gets claimed, it gets taken down. And as far as I can tell, she just sort of stopped. Nobody knows what happened. Digs into his omelet. Fisk is, like, looking at how people eat omelets and is, like, slowly... Yeah, I got no idea. How do you eat an omelet? <laughs> I don't eat eggs. Very carefully. You with, with your mouth, with a mouth hole is generally, traditionally how Shove it's done. Shove it in. Uh, Goose style. Yeah, so this is going to, like, put a piece of omelet into a orifice they're forming in their in their head. Uh, which which side of their head? The front. Front, lower, or higher? <laughs> well, I mean, is it in the mouth zone? Mouth zone. They're they're really they're really trying to to get it not fucked roll up. Roll a dexterity check. Looking at how everyone else is doing it. Make this do a dexterity. Okay, yeah, I got I got to take. I'm ready to roll something. Okay. Slide of hand check. For this. <laughs> Slide of hand. Uh, yeah, I just got an eight. <laughs> Okay, uh, you put the omelet in your face, and you do succeed to eat it, but it sounds like a shredder from the 80s. It's like... <laughs> uh, as it just, like, sl- and it takes, like, a good 45 seconds for, like, the entire omelet to just, like, go into... a chunk to go into your head. And I think I'm doing it great. Yeah. Do we hear the, the shredding? That's what I'm saying. It's so loud that you can't even really talk over it. Yeah, Felicity, like, leaps when the sound first starts. Dudu just immediately turns and just looks watches it uh yeah no one else can think or do anything <laughs> but to sit there and watch this happen do i like it do you like it uh that's up to you do you like it i'm asking it out loud do i like this oh shit i don't know D- does it take you took your time with it can you taste the butter and the love what does what does taste do what is that like it's if you could see colors but with your tongue well put yeah i was gonna say it's like if you could feel smells tongue yeah god damn it this motherfucker is a stoop i don't really have a tongue so i'm a little can you feel mm-hmm. things like rough and grass yes did you feel anything when the egg hit your head mm, it was did it feel fluffy kind of like bird feathers kind of, a little yeah, bit like soft so and then there were those those chunks of those black things in it. So what things. you're saying is, Dudu says, creeping his hand towards Visk's plate, is uh, you don't really want the rest of yours. Ah, <laughs> uh, not really. This seems like enough for me. Dudu takes Visk's plate and just goes in. Oh, I guess you can have it. Like, That's what I like to see. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's all. Don't worry about it. Sometimes eggs aren't bloody. He's stuffing his mouth. <laughs> So let's see. Let's see. Looks. He looks. Uh, he takes out a silver pocket watch. Ooh. Yes. What time is it? <laughs> uh, we're looking about eight a.m. Uh, so we got we got some time. Plenty of time to gather some intel. I'm wondering if any other people have information. I'm going to suggest that you two, and he's pointing to Felicity and Dudu. I think you should have a chat with Dylan. Oh, mm. I just ate. Ugh. That's probably a good idea. Whereas I would like to have a, a, a quick chat here with the mayor. Okay. Um, yeah, I have a quick question for the mayor before I go. When she materializes, uh-huh. where is it? Is she inside the building already or does she enter the building from outside or? That's a great question. Usually she starts on the street and kind of strides in, you know? She needs to make an entrance. Yeah, yeah. That's You know what? And he points directly at you. That's exactly it. She likes to make an entrance. Good to know. All right. Uh, I guess I suppose it's time to go talk to the pickle man. He probably has some good information for us, like it or not. All right. Yeah. Plus, you know, that's the general store, so probably some stuff in there too. Yeah. All right. Y'all want to head over there, and I, I guess uh, this wants a private conversation with the mayor. Yes. All right. Yeah. Felicity sort of struggles to her feet with her weakened right leg, and uh, collects ricochet and begins to head out in that direction. Yeah, that that foot it's like, it's feeling better than it did yesterday, but it's still like, you're still going to have that disadvantage on uh, what was it? I can't climb You can't do your climb. Not on that foot like, Hazel looks at it and says, I'm so sorry. I, I it, you're, you're never going to walk right again, thanks to me it's, Don't worry, I think I'll be okay but I appreciate the concern You're so brave. Give my love to Dylan tell him I'm sorry for telling him to fuck off turns visa. I'm not that sorry. He's a little pushy. <laughs> uh, 
All right, uh, Senor Goo, what's up? Well, first of all, and Visk is going to, like, kind of nod towards the pickle jar. Like, can we talk, like, privately, privately? Do you mind? Oh, yeah. Do you mind if I put this in the safe? Oh, yeah, just put, pop it in the safe. Yeah, go ahead. Right, Visk does that. <laughs> okay, you go into the room. Uh, and you hear, we are the Lipperish! Yes, yes, of course, of course you are. You are? You, you are here to kill? No, 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 I'm just passing through. Don't worry about me. Okay. You just chill out. Uh, okay. And recedes into the corner like a scared spider. Okay, you make sure that this uh, this thing doesn't come out of the safe at, for, for any reason. How about that? I give you a little job. You dislike... I dislike the pickle. the pickle, yes. Pickle is enemy. Indeed. I'm I'm wondering if yes. Understood. He grabs the jar with uh, his uh, uh, licorice thing, smashes it to the ground, Elf. and just rips the pickle apart. Well, that... Just like crushing it into nothing. It's like grabbing it with tinier and tinier pieces of licorice to pull apart smaller and smaller pieces of pickle until there is just nothing but a green puddle. Well, that works too. Allies! Yes, nice job, you. Well done. Uh, it recedes back to the, the corner, but like in a less terrified way, a little bit contented. Yes, good freak. Nice job. Good freak. Good freak, yes. Nice job. Yes, good freak, yes, nice. God, it's growing on me, I think. Uh, and Visk, like, closes the, the jail cell door and leaves that <laughs> behind. Yeah, I mean, that's like, that works. You... <laughs> What's up? Nice to finally talk to you in private. I've got some questions for you. All right. Your voice is what accompanied that strange message that came to us in the underworld on a pickle. Sure. Am I correct in that? Uh, I, I said I said some stuff. I yelled into the barrel and Dylan said he'd uh, pass it along. Right. So. Uh-huh. This is, this is not okay. What has happened here? You're not supposed to send messages down to us. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. And here's the thing. I fully believe... You were ignorant of this. And yes, ignorance of the law is no excuse or anything like that, but I don't think you're the mastermind here. Yeah, really? No, yes, no, of course not. That doesn't seem fair. <laughs> but you're not the mastermind here is what I'm getting at, and I believe that Dylan is... To I, well, I am the mayor. May I, I, you may have made a mistake and he gestures at his electric blue embroidery on his no, white sash that reads, The Mayor. No, you yes, <laughs> of course you're the mayor. I know this. I'm just saying that when it came to the plan... Of delivering a message to the underworld via pickle, yeah, I have we were a feeling asking for help that even though your voice was on this pickle, you were not the person that sent it down. You had no knowledge that this was the wrong thing to do. And what I'm saying is that Dylan is in deep, deep trouble. Am I under arrest? It's, it's, wait, what's going on? Not necessarily. If you help me. Oh, oh, okay. I, I, I thought I, I thought you were y'all were helping me. Look, I am here to help. I'm here to help you. Be in less trouble than you are currently in, because it's deep. It goes as deep as hell. I, uh, hell? I thought you, I thought it wasn't hell. I thought it was something else. Oh, it's a turn of phrase. I'm sorry. But <laughs> what I'm saying is that mm. I need and would enjoy your willing help to take down this Dylan character, who is clearly trifling with things that he's not meant to. There are rules, there are regulations, there are boundaries, and he is breaking all of those things. I, I guess. I, if you say so. I mean, we, well, let's just let's just talk about it. Let's just all talk about it, and it'll be, we'll figure it out. Uh, time's running. Is this something that we need to settle before noon? Look, and Visk pulls out judicious. <sighs> I was asking nicely. I don't know if you know what a gun is, what it does, but it's not pleasant. Okay. From one lawman to another, I'm sure you can understand why this is important. Okay, make an, make an intimidation roll now. <laughs> okay. And make it with advantage, because he specifically called you to give you that gun. <laughs> uh, 15 plus uh, intimidation, 3. And if I roll again... That's the 11, so the first the first one's better. Uh, he grabs the sides of his hat and, like, tucks them down over his ears and face. He's like, oh, no. Oh, geez. Oh, I, okay. Well, I guess, we, yeah, sure, sure. God, I thought things were turning up for me. No, I knew you were a okay. good kid. I knew you were a good kid. They holster uh, Judicious back in. Stay out of my way. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah, whatever Whatever you say. All right, I'm, 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 I'm going along with it. Right. You got it. Thank you. Uh, do you, maybe we can 
talk about me not getting killed? Absolutely. Somehow by, by Scorpion Lady? Yes, we're all here to help everybody in this situation. Uh, for sure. Absolutely. Totally. He's like backing away, hands, palms raised, and we are going to <laughs> cut to... Felicity and Doodoo over at the Fuzzy Pickle Saloon and General Store. Now, you'll recall, being huge fuzzy heads, that the Fuzzy Pickle is half saloon, half general store. Uh, as you walk in, you startle a clean-shaven man sitting at the table in the corner, and yet again, tarantula legs sprout from his face like a beard in defense. But then he recognizes you, and they recede again, and he gives you a, a terse nod. Return the nod in the same way that you might nod at somebody who you see regularly at a location or event or a workplace, but don't talk to. I wave like an idiot. Hi! Uh, he, the beard reemerges, uh, and he nods, but it doesn't go away. Oh, nice beard, I say, like, touching my my long, unshaven beak. <laughs> hmm. What do you think I look like with a beard, Felicity? You know, I think that you could pull it off, honestly. I really think you could. I don't think it's necessary. I think you have such a nice, uh, angular shape of your beak, you think, but... They got one at the general store? You know, I guess it can't hurt to ask. We have to ask. I'm gonna at least ask that. Uh, there's a sign that says ring bell for service next to a missing chunk of counter. Uh, Felicity walks up to the counter and just kind of knocks on it in lieu of being able to ring a bell. The, there's a barrel behind the counter, the side of which reads, Dylan Pickleman! And the lid of that barrel pops off and out emerges beloved NPC, Dylan. Hello. Hi. What can I help you with? There was, it seems like there was some sort of accident across the street. Some of my constituent parts over there got a little bit uh, manhandled. I can't quite figure out what was going around, but what? it's not important. What's going on? How can I help? Wait, what happened? I'm not sure. That, uh, that's private stuff, buddy. Hmm. We've got some questions for you. Okay. <laughs> Ask away. Do you have any beards? Well, we have a variety of things at the general store section, and he kind of swirls over like a like a just a like a like a little river, just kind of like splashes over there, uh, which is not something you've been able to see. you've seen him really do much before. He generally is just coming out of the pickles, the pickle jar, but now it's like there's like a line of pickles going back to the barrel, like a like almost like an umbilicus. And he's uh, he's standing on like a like a on two legs made of pickles that leave a, a vinegary footprint as he walks towards the general store. Says, "Let me show you this part of the store." And there are uh, several rows of supplies. Uh, would you like to know what the supplies are? Love to. I asked specifically for beards, but uh, all right. We've got everything. We've got dynamite, fatback, hardtack, jerky, rope, nails, canning jaws, heirloom tomato seeds, needle and thread, silver knives, <laughs> iron chains, pickaxes, false beards, wagon wheels, wagon axles, wagon tongues, flour, sugar, bacon, coffee, tea, oil paintbrushes, destroyed shoes, oil paints, and salt. What was that you said about oil paintbrushes? <laughs> oil paintbrushes. How big are they? Uh, he takes out. He's got an oil paint. You got a variety. You got a variety of, of, of fine work. Uh, the broad ones that look like house painting brushes, and you got the tiny little ones that look like eyebrow pencils. Uh, very butch reference for me. Uh, you also got, you know, just everything in between. They are all monogrammed with an MB on the handle. MB. Mustache. Bro. If you say so. I, 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 I can't choose. I, I, there's too many here. Are you interested in a brush, brother? Felicity, you take control. I, I can't do this anymore. I, Felicity is examining the silver knives that are in here, sort of turning it over. Yeah, you recognize them. They are identical to the silver knife that you found on the Midnight Special. In fact, uh, the brushes are also similar to... Uh, Maximilian Buckworth's oil paint brushes that you saw. Are these are these wares all from the train? Most of the things, yes, yes. We just we, we when it when it showed we salvaged we salvaged what we could. Very resourceful. Yes, including me. <laughs> and, and what a pleasure that is. Uh, she's turning over <laughs> the the silver knife and just kind of like silver. She's like muttering to herself and like like bringing her fingers to her head as she's trying to remember something. Something had like leaps out of the fogged over part of her lost memory 
when she was sitting on death's doors at the hands of Scarlet Sizzlefingers. Ooh. And there's some sort of instinctive conceptual understanding of the ability of Silver to interact with her in a way that would, could repel her that she doesn't fully understand. I love it. Make a, uh, do you want to make an insight roll? Yes. This is classic insight. 16. Yes, yes. You remember uh, being able to... Actually, no, that's not how that played out. <laughs> I think actually Max uh, Dudu hit him with a guitar yep. is how that ended. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Come on. That's how that happened. But yeah, you, you've recently seen some evidence of that too, which might have brought that back. When the silver bell was rung on the desk, it seemed to affect Visk in some way. And there's, and there's been like, a, yeah, there's a, it's classically arc- like magically there's like there's there are a lot of rumors and legends about silver uh there is a there is both a toxicity and a purity to it that makes it interact with the undead your ghosts your various etc all kinds of weird shit don't like silver Hmm. dylan i think i have an ordered place here i think i know what i want ask away uh these silver knives here uh one of these jars these pickle jars one of these sticks of dynamite. Can I have them? You can have literally whatever you want. You're trying right. to help my friend. Thank you very much. The, the doors are open. I also don't take money. Oh, you don't for the store either. Wow. Oh. No, everything's free here. Well, that makes this easier. Otherwise, I would have been. Otherwise, I would have had money when I was robbed yesterday. I might not have point. had my barrel broken. I should start taking money, I guess. I keep a little on hand. But... Let's wait to see how today ends. Yeah, let's see how today goes first. Fair enough. <laughs> Say, what's a fat back? Oh, it's uh, some sort of some sort of uh, some sort of uh, what you call it? Hillbilly food. Uh, let me just. Uh, fatback is, of course, a cut of meat from a domestic pig uh, that has been allowed to get hard. And I may not have known what fatback was. Uh, that's fine. You got it. Uh, you got you got a you got a handful of rotten pig meat. Yay! And some jerky, please. And uh, yeah, can I get the paint brushes and the paint? Yeah. Yes. Take your take your pick. Have it. Take a, ask. Take everything that you want. And that's gonna. Dude's obviously going over the beards. That's gonna be it for me. <laughs> I got other plans for this guy. He, he says, pointing to my beak. Excellent. You hear a you hear a bell ring outside. Uh, the town bell that signals uh, signals that it is now ten a.m. Hmm. Hey, uh, didn't we have something? Sh- shouldn't we have done anything else, Felicity? Let me take oh, another. Like, no, can I, can, can, no, me. I, I don't want to. I don't want to. Tra- I changed my mind. I don't want to track the time. I want to take that back. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. It'll just. It'll just happen when it happens. <laughs> uh, but go ahead. Sorry. Say, Felicity, what time is it? <laughs> you motherfucker. She she pats her body, looking for her pocket watch, but there doesn't seem to be one. Mm. I unfortunately doesn't see my half the time. Well, Hazel does. Oh, uh, you know, morning. Morning. Uh, yeah. we probably needed to ask something about that sizzle lady, right? Did we have anything else to ask? Or can I can I use the restroom real quick? Is Dudu asking? <laughs> Absolutely, it's in the corner. There's a small pickle barrel in the corner. Hey, <laughs> you is know, is there a mirror around there? Uh, there can be. <laughs> sure. No, you know what? There's mirrors on the uh, in front of you on the ground. There's like a there's a there's a full length floor to ceiling uh, mirror just laying on one entire shelf seven feet long. What about one of those mirrors behind a bar? Ah, uh, yeah, that would have been great, yeah. but it's not there. Oh, uh, damn. Okay. Adila <laughs> uh, says, "Oh, I forgot to put that back up." And he uh, <laughs> puts it up behind the bar. <laughs> oh, I actually do. Do now you mentioned I do have a question for you, Dylan. Yes, ask away. Anything I can do to help my saviors? Dudu walks away to do something at the mirror. Do you know what a gun is? That's an interesting question. I feel I innately know that it's not something that I like, but that's all I can say. I what is it? Do not really know either, but I since my associate has come into possession of one, I've some of their Oh, Hazel's artifact in the box? Yes. And since my uh my partner came into possession of it. Their actions and their demeanor have been quite strange and... More than usual, you mean? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, in a, in, a, in a darker way, a more sinister way. And I'm trying to understand what, what is happening here. I c- c- couldn't tell you. 
thank you anyway. I find that when people begin to act in different and dark and sinister ways, it's probably fine and not worth looking into. For instance, <laughs> I was once, uh, I met some kind people and I tried to help them and then I was locked up in a barrel and, and insulted. Now I could have taken that as an insult, but now I see that they were merely trying to save me. You see? If I'd read into their behavior, I would have thought something bad. But instead, I simply waited for all to be explained to me. Uh, Felicity nods because it's it's simply much more convenient for Dylan to believe that. Yes, yes, your your clear love and affection for me spilled out in your actions, eventually. Anyway. Dudu walks back over with a, with a black and brown line drawn around either side of his beak, almost like... Uh, he missed lipstick practice <laughs> into a uh, kind of a goatee of sorts. Puts the paint <laughs> and brush down on the on the general store area and says, "I'd like a refund, please." <laughs> Who the hell are you? I've never seen you before in my life. It's me, Doo Doo. <gasps> my word. You're like a different bird, Maybe my I just uh, grew a little. Uh, I, uh, he says, like stroking it and then smearing it more on his face because <laughs> it's still very wet. My word. Fantastic. You know, I once I, I, I once saw someone with a fucked up face like that. Mm. Didn't look good on them. Looks good on you. I, I couldn't know what you're talking about. But anyway, thank you. And I'd like a refund on these free oil paints. Of course. Here you go, and he hands you a pickle. Sorry, let me make change. He hands you a half of another pickle. That's better. <laughs> yes, I well. put it in my pocket. Uh, Hazel uh, walks in quickly. He's like, you might want to get this guy the fuck away from me. <laughs> he goes and stands I behind Dylan. <laughs> I was going to say, before we like, I left uh, Hazel, I was going to mention, like, don't say anything about what we talked about. <laughs> yeah, that didn't. He was out the door pretty quick. Uh, you freaked him the fuck out. He says, "Y'all, y'all want to? Wait, this motherfucker's freaking me out. Sorry, I know he's your friend. What uh, happened? And he just started fucking threatening me and threatening Dylan. It's weird. Visky, what you do? Yes. Nothing. What is he talking about? What you do, Visky? Nothing. Yes. I'm just trying to get some information. Mm. All right. Well, you know, I'm fucking. I'll tell you what you need to know. You know, just don't menace me with a weapon I gave so you. So, did Jesus. you two find anything out? Dudu uh, smears more of the oil on his face accidentally and goes, Hmm, we're trying to figure that out. As we, What happened to you? Okay. As we, uh, no. No, we did not. But we have things, and they have things. And we can get things. <sighs> so, is the plan to just throw things at the ghost? Yes. No. Kind, kind of. I have a plan. Oh, what's up? Well, yeah, lay it on me. Lay it on us. Kind of a kind of a two parter here, uh, or or maybe two parts wrong way to put it with a fail safe, I guess. Mm -hmm. First, we have you seem pretty insistent that whatever your new toy is is going to help us handle this situation. I don't know what it is, and I don't know what it does, and I'm a little concerned about the way you seem to be talking to it. I don't know what it is or does. I'm excited. Hmm. Okay. Well, I have an actual plan besides that. Then. All right. We have the silver knives here from the train, and we know where she's going to be and at what time. From what I understand, she seems to just kind of do things almost seemingly on autopilot. It doesn't matter if there's money there. It doesn't matter if there's any anything functional there to her. If she's going to walk right into that building, as far as I'm concerned, we don't need to be there. And what can be there is a jar full of silver knives and a stick of dynamite that will launch those knives in every direction hmm. as fast as possible through her and take her apart so that we don't need to get anywhere near the terrifying arm that she has that took my leg off. Ah, one of those IUDs, huh? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> Does Visk know about Silver's properties against... Uh, uh make an arcana check, Visk. Oh, crit fail. <laughs> uh, so you're telling me we're throwing cutlery at a ghost. I, I'm, I think I'm missing something that's a critical component about this what, plan. You're going you're gonna to talk to your tube and then point that at her and that's going to solve the problem? It, it assured me it was very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sounds trustworthy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, did the cutlery tell you that they were very powerful? Um, I, well, here, let's try this out. Uh, I'm going to toss a silver knife to Visk, not like throwing it at him, but like like to catch it. Okay. Here. 
This is gonna try to catch it. Oh yeah, make a, make a, uh, you know what? Make a uh, fucking dexterity saving throw. <laughs> pretty good, but like, it's pretty easy. <laughs> Uh, I got a 17. Yeah, you uh, snatch it out of the air and it is uncharacteristically cool for Visk until (laughs) you uh, immediately, uh, hold on, you take two damage as it like burns the end of your hand off. (laughs) Ah! Well, there's my proof of concept, everyone. (sighs) Wow. Does that do it? You you can just hold that. Are you a ghost? no. I thought you were some kind of like, Well, I thought you were somebody that had like slug stuff. You know what I mean? Like uh, slug stuff? But I'm not that either, but wh- that fucking hurt. Maybe like an oyster? Yeah, I think it's going to hurt her real bad. I think that's the plan. I mean, how, how am I similar to her? <sighs> well, it seems to me that both of you don't belong here. For a very similar reason, right? Ouch. Does it hurt Dylan? I don't know. You know? I, I would rather not. I'd rather not touch that. <laughs> Doesn't look good. Go on, throw, throw it in the pickle uh, tub. Don't throw the <laughs> throw it in the pickle the, tub. Pulls the lid, goes back. In, oh. He he goes back in the barrel and closes <laughs> the lid behind him. This is science. We need to test if this is going to work. I saw it hurt you. I don't. Why do you need to know what can hurt me? I need to know what this hurts. It hurts you. Is the it'll fit. probably hurt the ghost. All right, I'm not a ghost. Ghost. I'm simply a creature of the psychic waste. He, like, emerges back from the barrel to start explaining. Felicity, use that fork and jab it into the pickle that that, that Dudu just got. Yeah, I pull out the pickle. I'll hold the knife steady and I'll put the pickle on it. Okay. Yeah, nothing happens. Pickle seems safe. Yeah, I'm I'm trustworthy and likable. Hmm. I got nothing up my sleeves because I don't have them. I mean, he just, like, shows you these just pickles. Just made of pickles, me. Oh. A dude who bends himself away from the, the pickle man towards uh, Felicity and Visk. What about his pickle juice? Hmm. Maybe he's a juice-based organism. I don't see why we need to worry about hurting the pickle man anyway. Sure, he's annoying, but he doesn't seem to be causing any problems. We're here for the ghost, aren't we? He's like, Hazel is, yeah, yeah. come on. I don't, why don't we get no, all... No, just because he also happens to be from the psychic waste. I wanted to test and see if this silver thing was uh, more universal if, it, if or if I am just allergic to silver, which is news to me, by the way. Well, shit, why don't you just, you got, if it's, if it's that, why don't you just hurt the licorice? You seem to like doing that. No, yeah, we could do that. I like the leperish. He's cute. But he's all the way across the street. <laughs> I'm confident the knives hurt the leperish. We've been through this before. There, there's there's a momentary flashback with like a like a sepia tone of me throwing the knife at the leperish on the train. You severely damage one of the one of the four cables that it is uh, that is holding it up. Like you cut all the way through, and you can tell that it's like moving to bear more of its weight on the others. Oh wow. Oh, yeah. And the part that was cut off with that knife has not grown back. Well, as much as I don't like the pickle, man, I, I don't think he's... Thanks, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your tongue, pickle man. Fair enough. <laughs> I don't think we're here for him. I mean, that one that one lady kind of ripped you guys to pieces. No, we're not here for him. Of course not. We're here to deal with this ghost. Yeah. Well, all right. Let's get the fuck back on program then. Hazel uh, is now is still like putting a lot of distance between himself and Bisk. All right. So as far as I can tell, we got we know when she's going to be here. We know where she's going to be. Y'all got everything you needed from from the general store. Y'all got everything you need from the supplies. Yeah. What are nails made out of? Silver? Nah, iron, I believe, typically. Shucks. Steel, if you're real hat lucky. Copper, if you're <laughs> confused. <laughs> Too soft. Too soft a metal. All right. Well, I like the IED thing. Yeah. The improvised yes. unex- explosive device. Felicity collects a uh, uh, some like long rope to use as a fuse. Uh, y'all want to do that? Y'all want y'all want to set this up over there? What are we doing? I think that's the plan. Hey, KC. Hey, what? Down here. Hey, what are you doing down there? I'm in your phone. I'm on the internet. Hey, get out of there. I need to look at uh, naughty things. No, no, wait. Well, 
yes, you can do that. But okay. first, you should check out patreon.com slash goaltenders. Oh, okay. What the hell is that? It's a website. <laughs> okay. Well, what's Skulltenders? I know what Patreon is. What's Skulltenders? <laughs> Skulltenders is an independent show supported by users like you. Oh, wow. Well, not like you, because you're on it. That's true. But like you, the listener. I look directly at the camera. <laughs> I point my phone at the camera. <laughs> well, what's on this dang Patreon of ours? Well, wait, let me take a look around. I can see, like, large, like, low-poly, three, like, early CG representations of the various things that we have on there. Wow. We got maps and mandibles, where Cohen drops their maps and DM plans. Cool. We got Skull Talkers, our companion talk show, where we talk about the behind the scenes of the show. And we even have, and I lift up, like, a big yellow rectangle that is, like, perfectly flat. It is just a triangle that has been drawn with, like, a 3D modeling thing. Mm. Wow! And under here we got Casey's Doodles. That's you! Yeah, those are the doodles I draw while we're playing D anD D, and I and I scan them. Wow! <laughs> yeah, uh, we also have our Discord where you can ask us questions for Skull Talkers and connect with other fans, right? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah, can you get their <laughs> personal information while you're in there? I sure. No. Well, well maybe we'll talk <laughs> later. We'll talk later about that. But that sounds great. Where is that again? That's patreoncom skulltenders. Wow, patreoncom skulltenders. That's right, Casey Green. All right, now, uh, get out of my phone. Shake my phone. Get out of there. <laughs> oh, no, this is unarchiving all my e- emails. Shit, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> <laughs> now back to the show. Where's she gonna be? She coming for you? I point at Hyena Man. That's, that seems to be... Yeah, I mean, like, there ain't nobody else. Mm, all right. I guess you could fuck with Dylan again, but, you know... Gang, Honestly, we're gonna set a trap. All right, well, y'all want to get this going? We're just gonna set a bomb. Yes. In a video game way, uh, not a real way. <laughs> <laughs> Is there like a trip wire? Like, what's the mechanism for it going off? Yeah. I mean, or do we just throw it? We know exactly when she's going to be here, right? Yes. Mm. We just run a fuse. Okay. Okay. Right. We don't even need to be in here. I got all this rope. We could run the fuse from outside. Did you? They probably had fuses, too, because I don't I don't think rope is just going to burn. All right, man. I'll go back and get the fuses. Yeah, go ahead and do it. Go get go get fuses. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for you. Yeah. Mm-hmm, she's going to mm-hmm. meander off to do that. So while she's gone, we should discuss what we have to do with this. Uh, do we have to consider that the liberish is in here? Do oh, to- shit. I just remembered. I don't want to. I don't know if I want to be alone. <laughs> I don't know. Hold on. You're not alone. <laughs> don't worry. I'll save you. Thank you. Oh, please. So dramatic. Yeah, sure. So, do we want this liberish to also be destroyed in the process, or do we want to, s- to spare this poor thing? I mean, he seems cool now. Or at the very least, harmless. You speak of us! Uh, the liberish is now, like, oh. dangles down directly in front of Dudu's face, uh. who's crawling on the ceiling. Hello, good freak! Ah, uh, yes, good freak! Good job! Hi, hello! Good freak! Do you want to help? Yes! Always! What if we use the liprish to make sure the bomb stays close to the chameleon lady? I was just wondering that myself. Hey. We help. We trust. Yes. Do you think you can make sure when you see a scary lady come in that is not the cat lady? Oh, you almost I almost got mm. you with that one. <laughs> oh, no, not the cat lady. Saw me coming. Good thinking. <laughs> No, I saw you coming. But if you see a scary lady who's not the cat lady, can you make her life bad? Mm, vague, yes. <laughs> My six intelligence responds well. Do bad things to ghost lady. Hmm. This is too easy to muck up, Bisky. So how about I just hold on to him and use him as a little, uh, you know... I'm tapping the side of my head. Little later tool. This is a tool that'll help us later on. Mm, I guess. Yes. All right. Deploy at me. Ever since you got your weird little L-shaped thing, you've been acting a little, uh... Taking L's. Saucy. <laughs> saucy? Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little more confident. Mm. It's just that everyone else had a cool weapon. Now I've got mine. It feels better. Okay. Don't forget who you are, though. Who you are in here, and I touch... You have your poncho on, right? <laughs> yeah, I've got the, the duster, and I've got the work shirt under it. 
there is still a big hole in that poncho from when uh, Scarlet <laughs> yeah, stuck right her through, tail yeah. in. So it's right there, yeah. <laughs> I point at the hole. <laughs> Don't forget who you are in here. Uh, okay. You're, you're, well, you don't have one of those. Um, the thing that makes you, you. Don't forget that. This is like not following, like just kind of squinting, like. Your quintessence, your essential nature. That's a rather fancy word for you, little freak. Good for you. Thank you. I'll hold on to the freak. Are you sure you're only six intelligence? That's at least an eight. There's a difference between intelligence and wisdom. <laughs> All right, so they had Pexus Sizzler, they had Blast and Decker. I didn't know which is better, I just brought both. The more the merrier, I say. God, why do you have so many fuses on that train? Anyway, a mystery for another time. Let's solve the one about me not getting killed. All right, let's. So, uh, this is, this is dynamite. Right. I'm worried about collateral damage. I don't want our our friend here, the mayor, to be wounded in action. Uh, Sorry, I thought I didn't need to be in here. I thought that this was was, sort of a... I was wondering about the bait situation. That's what I'm I'm, kind of getting at here. Yeah, we need to make sure Hmm. that that weird lady is going to be here. Bait. I think it... Are we positive? No, I don't know. She's unpredictable. <laughs> I can't fucking reckon for where she's going to be. Well, that's why we need to make her predictable. Hmm. You got any money on you? Rifles through his pockets. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Wait a second. Uh, yeah, I got about seven smackaroos. All right. All right. I think she'll definitely come here now because that's the only money in the store. How I about... Mean, yeah. How about, how about, yeah. how about, we take this safe, All right. which looks really tasty, we close it and we put it in a very nice looking place where she'll definitely go. And inside the safe, when she opens it, there's the bomb. Oh, oh shit, oh. you're devious. <laughs> what if that? Now that's a good idea. We uh, could even make it a little fun for her, put like a little puzzle saying like the safe is your, <laughs> you know, birthday. That or... sounds pretty contrived, you know what I mean? It just seems, it sort of, sort of sounds like busy work in the in the form of a puzzle, you so know what I mean? So is this the type of safe that has a key or is it the type of safe that has a tumbler lock? Combination lock. Combination I lock. I just don't lock it, typically. <laughs> Well, do you know the combination? Nope. That's why I don't lock it. <laughs> well, then, that does put a bit of a mm. I mean, downer on this plan. Maybe, I, maybe you know, maybe she'll want me to open it for her. You know, I don't know. Maybe just. But then you're going to be so close to the blast. I'll just stand behind it. Uh, if you're wi- like before. If you're willing to take that risk. Not really, now that I say it. I was just trying to be brave. <laughs> yeah, and you are. You can be brave. You are brave. You're the mayor. You're so brave for offering to do that. This is the mayor's duty to be brave for the town. You'll be a hero. Yeah, I won't get killed by accident. Nope. I hope not and doubt it. Hmm. You know what? Here. And Visk is going to uh, put ghost armor on Hazel. Oh. If they consent. If he consents. Because okay. I understand that uh, Hazel might not want this to touch uh, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, he skitters around. So, so, so. Wait, wait, wait. Let me explain. You can let them do this one. Yeah. You can let them do this yeah, so one. I have, I'm a, I have magic, and I'm able to uh, give you some armor if you would like some armor. You got magic? Well, yes. Did I know that? Well, think about it. I don't know I if I knew that. I don't know if you did. <laughs> Nate! Yeah. I just sort of thought you were like threatening pudding. You know what I mean? I haven't mean a lot of mean food lately. Or interested. Threatening pudding? Yeah, threatening pudding. <laughs> it's spicy. I can be friendly pudding. I don't know what pudding is. But, uh, would you like some armor? It will perhaps protect you from any, uh, errant explosives. Yeah, okay. Sure. This puts a gooey hand on... He, he, he shakes uh, Hazel's hand. Oh, okay. Uh, as you do, uh, Hazel accepts the armor that has been granted. From the handshake, out spills out this, like, shimmery... It's it's not liquid goo. It's like, if goo was air, it goes across and protects uh, Hazel. If, like, if goo was air. God. What if that? What a, what a time... What a world that would be. It's, is, is that plasma? Did I just describe plasma? That is worse for me. Uh, she said, whoa, shit, check this out. Hey, b- Birdman, throw, throw a rock at me. Tosses you a little rock. All right. Guy just go for his head. All right, make an attack roll. You got it, and then I just with too with how does ghost armor work? By the way, with too much like enthusiasm, I throw that rock at him. Uh, yeah, let me see what his AC is actually. Uh, 
Well, your your base AC is now thirteen plus your Dex modifier right. because of the armor. What are, you, what are you rolling? What are you rolling here? Fourteen. Uh, yeah, it hits him right in the face. What? Uh, thirteen plus Dex? You have zero Dex? Oh shit! You're right. Thirteen plus Dex. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh shit! Hold on. Let me look up what a Noel's Dex is. <laughs> That's basically what he is. Uh, Noel has plus one Dex. <laughs> Hazel. Uh, is, is, so he has a 14. What did you roll? A 14. 14 to 14. 14. Okay, yeah. Uh, roll the d4. <laughs> d4. Uh, this one. God. Three. Uh, yeah, you hit him right in the eye patch and it stays up. He's just, ah, shit! Whoa! Oh my god. Ow! I misunderstood what this stuff does. You sure this is gonna help? If you act like a dumbass, it's not gonna help. I thought it made me invi- like invisible, intangible, like a ghost. <sighs> Sweetie, no. Well, but forgive me. You got something called ghost armor. Fair enough. Yeah, I, <sighs> I get it. I, I'll still, I guess, I'll still. I, I this. Uh, he's, he takes out his silver pocket watch. He's like, it's just like 1130. Fuck, where does the day go? I guess it take, took up a lot of time getting threatened. Felicity starts to get to work on this while people continue to talk, putting the knives and dynamite into the jar. She's using the screwdriver and one of the knives to pry the silver spurs off of her boots, Ooh. disassemble them and put those into the jar as Ooh. well to give some smaller shrapnel on top of the larger knives. Sounds good. She, she looks at the two fuses and decides to go with Blast and Decker. It seems to have a nicer branding. She starts to run that fuse out of it. Felicity, how, how, how large do you think this explosion is going to be, I guess, is the real question. The explosion shouldn't be too big, but the distance the knives are thrown is going to be pretty significant. I would make sure you're behind something. Yes, I don't want to get hit by that. Yes, it would be especially bad for you. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, don't like it. Uh, You know, that is that safe? It's not nailed down, right? It's just like sitting in there? Yeah. We could move that to the desk. And from across the street, you should be able to see Scarlet from behind. As she enters the building desk. Mm, that sounds like a plan, sure. All right, so I'll just... Where am I going to be? I guess at the desk. Yeah, we safe facing her. I see it. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, the bomb is going to be inside of the safe, which means that on all sides except for the front, knives are not going to be able to come that way. Right, 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 right. We're going to keep the door, however, unlocked because you don't know the combination. As long as she thinks something valuable is in there. Right. And doesn't think it's very suspicious that it's not locked. Put the smackaroos in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He takes out his $7 and yeah. places them inside yeah. uh, amongst the dynamite, I guess. Yeah, behind the jar, the jar <laughs> full of dynamite and knives. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can't put a cost on a career. And he leaves it in there. I'll stay with you, Hazel. I will be right under the desk, ready to pounce, and uh, uh, don't worry, I'll be hiding. So don't give away my location. You got it. Felicity takes a a finger and runs it over Dudu's grease paint goatee and uses it to draw a large dollar sign onto the front of the safe. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. It's perfect. Such, such, such subterfuge. How could she possibly resist? I, I certainly can. He reaches for the safe. Oh, uh, no, no. No, 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 no. no. Hey. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. So is there a fuse or is it just going to go? How are you going to... What's up? I look to the other two. Uh, hmm. I'm afraid this might be beyond me. I don't know. Do you have proficiency with thieves tools? I do. Then make a sleight of hand check. Oh, oh God. <laughs> 17. Yeah, uh, you don't quite recall the context because so much of your past is fuzzy uh, and not just because you're a kitty. Uh, mm. That's not mine to joke about. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a little, little racially insensitive, but okay. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's blurry, blurry past. Uh, <laughs> uh, but there is there is a clear image of the mechanism that's happening here of how it is a it is a you have the dynamite. There's enough slack uh, when the safe is will be fully closed and when it'll be about a little bit open. You're able to kind of get it in there to natch it. But when it is opened more than like a third of the way, the cord will pull the pin, which will strike the flint, which will ignite the dynamite. Boom goes the dynamite. Assuming you've done everything correctly. All right. Well, all right. looks like we're ready. All right. I guess now I just need to wait and be bait. I will post myself across the street 
which I believe is uh, Dylan's saloon. Yeah. Yeah. You. Uh, it's starting. To, the street's starting to get crowded. That lunch rush is heading into Dylan's again. If you, if you were counting on like an empty street to be able to see across, uh, you can see, but you can't. You know, you. If you were to say want to do something in the street, there's there's a bunch of fucking people in the street, mm-hmm. but you are able to post up in uh, the fuzzy pickle. Okay. And it's oh my god, oh my god, it's almost time. It's almost time. Lunch rush. That means it's almost noon. I'm so excited. Ah. Doodoo's already underneath the desk and is just like vibrating with excitement. Oh, this is so fun. Yes, we are having a good time. Liberish is right next to you. Shh. Oh, yes. Give sure. away our secret. Makes a little tentacle in front of his big red lips and makes a little shh. shh. All right, Felicity, where are you? Uh, Felicity is going to be like around to the side of the mayor's office. So you could like peek in through the window to see what's going on with Hazel and Scarlet and whatnot, but can also see the front door from where Visk is posted up. Mm. And uh, uh, Visk, where are you? Oh, you're across the street. I'm at the bar eyeing Dylan. Can I get you anything? We've got new specials. Hmm. Can you get me anything? I don't know. Information, maybe? Perhaps. What do you need to know? What are you doing here? I'm giving everyone my pickles. You understand. What are you doing here? They're so hungry, Visk. On this plane? They're so hungry. And you hear, uh, suddenly you hear people in the, in the street are shut. Ah, ah, shit, she's here, she's here. Visk, uh, you turn around, you've crowded street. You, can, you see a flash of red entering across, entering the building across the street. Uh, you barely get a, sh- get a glimpse of it, Felicity. She emerges into the mayor's office. I am recognizing that pretty much only Hazel is there to see her uh, clear line of sight. Uh, no, Felicity's looking through the window. Okay, so Felicity, you see a woman in red with a red bandana covering her face. Horrible chameleon eyes looking in every direction. Uh, a big hat. She's got that scorpion tail that is her entire right arm fully deployed and just letting it fall on the ground and curling it back up like somebody who is confused about how yo-yos work. Give me all the money, Sheriff. Strides forward. I is, I I ain't got no. It's it's in. She, he looks down at you. Just, I fucking forgot. What am I supposed to say? Safe. Right, right. Point to the, to tell her the safe. It's all safe. No, no. It's it's not gonna be safe for much longer. I'm gonna rip you apart, young man. She slashes at the desk, ripping like one of the legs out. The desk kind of like collapses onto you a little bit. It, it actually presses Hazel's, it pins his legs to the chair, so he is, he's kind of trapped in the chair. Oh, it's in the safe. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well. Tell him it's in the safe. Yeah, I heard, I heard you under the table. It's in the safe. I got it. <laughs> okay. She reaches forward. She reaches her non-scorpion pan forward, inching ever and ever closer to the safe, puts her hand on the... I'm going to call that a handle. She opens the safe and combined with the sound of the explosion is the sound like somebody dropping a full tray of full drinks as a dozen silver knives explode outward, shredding her body, cutting through this coat and it cuts through her bandana and it falls away. And is anyone looking? I am. Okay. Then you, Felicity, make a wisdom saving throw to see if you are terrified. As a two. Uh, Yeah, this is the scariest shit you've ever seen. (gasps) Her face beneath the bandana (laughs) is like a night terror. There's angry red and black lines extending outward from her chameleon eyes, and everything below her eyes is either infected or rotting off. Her jaw is disconnected on one side, hanging half loose and wobbling, and she, like, looks fucked up beyond this. Oh, God. She's got new cuts, new wounds on a ghost. Who could... uh, Impossible. But also, just her jaw looks horrible, and you can tell that's, that's not new. That's old. It looks like something rotted for so long that it should have died, but it just kept rotting out of persistence. And because you are frightened, you are going to have to use your entire turn to get as far away from her as possible. Felicity can feel her heart pound in her chest and her feet carry her away before she has any idea what she's doing. And we are going to go for initiative order. Oh, I got a 20. Okay. Eight. That's a nat 20, by the way. Oh, nice. Six. 
Visk, that's going to be you first. I do need to note that, Dudu, you do notice that uh, the safe was pushed backwards by the force of the explosion and seems to have landed on Hazel's lap, crushing both his legs. He's like, ow, shit, shit, got to ow, play, ow, ow, ow. It's Visk's turn, though. I just wanted to let you know what was going on. Hey, Jude. Yes? If I shoot that that woman across the street there who's robbing that joint... You're going to fire into a crowded street? My question was, since I only intend to kill that person, will your projectile pass through unharmedly the crowd? I wouldn't even fire into such a situation. Oh, good to know. I'm surprised you could even ask. I thought you were righteous. I did not know how you operated, sir. Well, now you do. Well, never mind. Save you for later. Uh. <laughs> and instead, Visk is going to shoot Dylan. What? <laughs> uh. You... What if that? <laughs> is that okay? I don't know. Do you, do you, how do you feel about that? You shouldn't be asking me. You tell me. Well, since it's such a commotion. And Visk points uh, judicious at Dylan, who is directly across and there's no people in the way. Well, you feel you f- and you feel good about it. You've had your instruction. I feel great about this. Yes. You're not supposed to be here. No, put him down. Let's go. Absolute aberration. You shoot your gun, which does not require a roll of any kind because it is a gun. You blow a hole in the side of the pickle barrel from which a thin stream of pickle liquid immediately starts gushing out at high pressure. Oh no! Oh no! And he, he, he takes his lid and slams it on the side, uh, trying to staunch the, the, the leaking. Why? Why? You know why. Fair enough, I do. I knew you knew. Uh, and he disappears into the pneumatic tube that his barrel is connected to and uh, vanishes from that barrel. Mm. The chase is on. Good luck. Uh, dude, uh, I mean, you can still move. It's your turn. Oh, me? I was going to move toward the pneumatic tube. Yeah, go for it. Oh, shit, you're made of goo. I forgot. I'm going to follow that motherfucker. Oh, boy, well, it's on now. <laughs> oh, boy, I completely didn't think about that. Oh, God, how? That's the main thing you the do. The chase is on. Fuck. Okay, hold on. Let's fucking the go. The H is O. Let's fucking go. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, I really <laughs> thought I had some there. Excellent. Fantastic. I just need to real quickly, uh, very super <laughs> fast, map up a, map out a pneumatic tube system. Just give me like two yeah, seconds. Yeah. <laughs> I completely understand. No, that rules. Best possible <laughs> thing to happen. Uh, okay. <sighs> you follow, uh, you, you zip into the pneumatic tube system. Uh, it looks like this, it looks like there's several different directions, but, uh, and they are all slick with pickle, but you can hear an echoing at a, if you take a right. I go that way. All right, you follow. You're, you're following him through the tube. Uh, he's a ways ahead of you, but uh, and you don't really know where they're leading. But uh, you're doing it. You're the chase is on. Doo doo, it's your turn. Okay. Help, Mister Mister Vulture. Yes. Am I going to die? Am I going to die? If I could push the desk up and out, would that hurt? Would that would the safe be in the way? Would would hyena man be in the way? Hazel, you can probably if you're trying to help Hazel, you can probably just like try to lift the desk in the safe. Yeah, enough for him to get out. Help! Help! Please get the help! Help! Okay, all right. I'm just getting my getting my bearings. I got a little confused underneath the desk. Not the first time. I should also clarify that there's a screaming scorpion ghost. Like it's just she's just like losing her shit. Yeah, yeah. I hear you too. Give me a second. I'm gonna I'm gonna push up on the desk in hopes to let uh, give some room for his legs to squeeze out and uh, not be broken anymore. Make an athletics roll. Eight. Uh, you are not able to do it. It's too heavy. There's the safe. There's the desk. There's everything. But suddenly, next to your hand, there are some black vines entwining your hands, strengthening you, lifting as the Lipperish pushes the desk up with you. And together, you're able to get the desk off. And then Lipperish uses one of its other tentacles to push Hazel out. So he's, his legs are free. Uh, they look hurt, but... Uh, you have stopped whatever was happening, which is to say uh, the crushing. Nice. Thank you. Oh, shit. She's still alive or whatever. And there's a scorpion lady who like lunges over on top of the desk. Try to trick me? Try to kill me? Try to kill ghosts? I'm the best man that ever was. 
You can't kill me. You can't stop me. You can cut me up. But my legend never dies. Felicity, uh, it is your turn. You are terrified and you have run into the street. That is what happens because that's what happens when you're afraid okay. as a character. Uh, you can make a wisdom saving throw now. 12. Uh, yeah, that's... Hmm. How much do you like Hazel? I... Fair question. Straight up, straight up question. <laughs> I mean, he made us breakfast and he let us stay there. And he's got the, like, sneaky eye patch thing going on, which I think she really appreciates, so... Yeah. I would say she likes him. Yeah, these are the things you're thinking as you're, like, tearing <laughs> off, like, pushing mole men and ostrich ladies out of the way uh, as you're running down the street. But you get a get a sense of yourself back, and you're able to get control. Now, uh, that's going to be your whole turn, though. That's just how it is. That's just how fear works. I'm sorry. Back to Visk. All right, Visk is, is hurtling through the pneumatic tube system. Yeah. They also want to use um, Manipulate Water to see if uh, they can control uh, pickle juice to uh, slow down or stop or bring it to them the the I assume the central pickle mm. of this uh, mass that comprises Dylan uh, are you trying to like grab him grab his juice yeah grab the juice and like kind of since he's using the juice to flow through the pipes if I can control the juice I can control his momentum as well hmm Okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, he is the juice, but I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, track control. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that, though, at least. Fair so. No, no, it's, it's, it's fair. You, you, you kind of, like, send juice shooting past his main form and try to push it back towards you. You're trying to back-channel it uh, into you. Now, you now have uh, a bunch of pickles heading straight for you. Uh, I'm also going to start backing away the 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 entrance that I came from seems you know I'd, I'd rather come out the way we came in because I know where that is than to continue down this line and end up in a place I don't know where it's going. So I'm going to be backing up with the pickle juice to the bar again. Yeah, you're you're drawing him back. Uh, you are both actually sprayed into the bucket together. Make a make an intelligence saving throw. Ooh. Wow. To avoid getting lost in the sauce. Lost in the sauce. Uh, that's a ten. Uh, yeah, you uh, you get confused. Uh. Mm -hmm. You're gonna make your next attack roll with disadvantage if you make such a thing, but you do. You didn't roll so badly that you lost your sense of personality and identity in pickle juice. So, you know, congratulations. Hooray! <laughs> it is, however, Dylan's turn, and he's gonna try to. Uh, he's going to try to close the lid with both of you inside. Uh, yeah, I get strength. I'll drown you and me, brother. I got a six, so you might. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, you were, you were unable to take any other actions right this second. Uh, we were going to cut back across the street to Scarlet, who is uh, very wounded. She steps out into the street, and everyone is so fucking scared <laughs> immediately. The worst thing in the world was this woman and then she showed what was going on under her eyes oh my god just to really paint the picture this is clearly like the surgery like the biomancy was rejected the what, whatever was happening with their face was uh the eyes were too much the eyes were too much uh and is it is overwhelmed the face and was not taken care of uh some sort of infection has set it uh set in apparently it's just that's right that's right feel me me, run in terror. She's lashing out her tail. The wounds that were on, covering her body from those silver knives are starting to heal up as people are screaming and running from her. With every scream, she seems to get a little bit more solid. I mean, she's just like attacking the crowd at this point. Dudu, it's your turn. Shit, I'm sorry. I, I really thought that was going to work. Well, it did something. We just got to finish. We, gotta, we just got to pull, pull the rest of it down under... You know the old saying. Anyway, Dudu with the Lipperish is going to flying that bad boy, the Lipperish, to try and uh, restrain Scarlet. Ooh, shit! Throwing the Lipperish. All right, uh, make a make an animal handling roll. <laughs> Ooh, animal handling. Eighteen. Oh yeah! Like you, you throw the Lipperish, it it splays its it splays its tentacles out. It like inherit like because of your roll is so good, it knows what's up, and it is able to get almost all of itself around her uh, scorpion tail and bind it back behind her arm. Uh, she is immediately enraged and is trying to like slap at it, but like having no effect on the Lipperish. She's she's like looking all. Around. She sees you now. She's like cocks her head to the side and she sees you. 
What you doing to me, owl boy? I, uh... Vulture boy, I can't, I can't tell birds apart since I got these eyes. Since I, since I, like, kind of threw it, it was, I threw it like it was a bowling pitch and we got <laughs> it in one. I'm just sitting there with, like, <laughs> just, like, fucking, like, f- pumping the fist of, of the, the hand I threw it with. Who do you are you think I am? Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Shit, I, I don't know. That's right. Um, Dudu the Eagle. <gasps> She's uh she takes a step back and some of those wounds start to open <laughs> again. That's right. Don't you forget the name. The the people are cheering, and as they're cheering for you, Dudu, uh, she's like some of those wounds are opening again. Felicity, it's your turn. Okay, so I am like in the crowd, correct up front. You've you've like you started like rolling back, like you like you ran. And it was like like what am I doing? And then and it's been... <laughs> we're Scarlet looking at Dudu. Well, one eye on Dudu, one eye on the crowd that she is starting to lose. Okay, I want to keep myself low and try to approach her without her seeing me. Okay, make a stealth check. Fifteen. Well. Sorry, I just want to send this picture to the chat. I am afraid. Uh, I mean, if it's an upside down twenty from where I'm sitting, does that does that? Mean- <laughs> twenty to twenty. She sees me. That means it's only a two. Yeah. She's still restrained. Woo. Yeah, she tur- she is. She is the nobody sneaks up on Scarlet Sizzle Fingers except for Doo just now. So she's a little shaken, but she does roll a fucking twenty and lo- like one of those red chameleon eyes with the loose ragged skin hanging beneath it is staring right at you. Uh, how how big is she? How tall is she? Is she like a physically imposing person, or is she just because she has a giant? Uh, scorpion arm. Now that you are asking the question, you realize she's only like 5'4", and as you realize that, uh, more wounds open on her body. Like more of those more of those cuts okay. starting her villain. She's now like she's now just like fucking bleeding. What a manlet. Yeah. <laughs> the idea that uh, some sort of undead creature would be taking lives from living things is absolutely abhorrent to someone like Felicity who, who loathes being dead and loves being alive. Uh, and so, <laughs> Of course! Of course! <laughs> She's going to throw her body at uh, Scarlet and just like try to drive her back inside of the sheriff's office and get her away from the crowd that is both empowering her and allowing her to kill people. You're just trying to push her? Yeah, I'm just trying to push her her bound body back inside. Okay, yeah, make a uh, make a strength. <sighs> that is 18 minus one. Yeah, maybe it's because she's off balance or maybe because she's super wounded or maybe it's because she's a ghost, but she is like, you like kind of just like push her up the stairs and it's it's like it's easier with every push. And like the only thing that's difficult is she's like, stop, I'm tough. <laughs> yeah, I, I let out a little grin and you can see my sharp teeth in my mouth as I continue to do so. Her jaw falls off when you do that. <laughs> like it's just fully It's it literally her jaw drops and hits the ground in front of you and you step on it and break it as you move forward. You almost get her across the threshold into the sheriff's station when your foot falls off. <laughs> uh, uh, what? <laughs> what? You, you take a step up, like you step with your left foot, and then you step with your right foot, and you leave the right foot behind you. You, you just, it's, take seven damage. Oh, okay. Well, Felicity, <laughs> you left your shoe behind. It's exactly the wound from yesterday, and it's actually, uh, it's the same wound that you would have had in your dream. Uh, if that had, if that finished and yeah it's it just completely detaches uh, if you fall prone does she fall with me nope losing a foot mid step kind of hard to imagine something that's more uh, putting you off balance yeah I can't you can't push off yeah this you start to feel uh, not great <laughs> you take five damage as you feel your innards start to deconstitute <laughs> you are in the barrel with uh, uh, Pickleman. What's his name? Dylan. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Perfect Pickle only lasts for 24 hours. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd planned to wait until the ghost had gotten rid of everyone. I was just using you, you see? I was using you, you and your room friends. The only one I love is Doodoo. The only one. <laughs> <laughs> the only one I can trust, you other two. You're, you're too canny. You're too insight. You're too perceptive. But him, him, I can use him like I use the little dog boy. 
Do you feel someone walking over his grave? <laughs> I just need a happy little face to put on my pickle towel. I get rid of all the people. I get rid of all the shops and all the stores become my pickle barrels. And he explodes out of the top of the barrel. And not just this barrel, but every building that has a pneumatic tube connected to it, every building that has been targeted by Scarlet Sizzle Fingers and is now abandoned is just flooded with pickle juice. And as he's doing this, Felicity, uh, you're still in the street, though. And Duty, you're like looking out at the street, right? I'm like on the threshold, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm same, same. Uh, you see the people in the street start to twist and writhe, and they are freaking the fuck out. Uh, people are vomiting pickles. Uh, cucumber vines are sprouting out of people's mouths, and cucumbers are just falling out of their mouth <laughs> and hitting the vinegary vomit of other people and s- emerging into more pickles. And there's there's dill sprouting on a child's face. There's an, the ostrich neck woman looks around in terror as vines erupt from the skin of her neck, which immediately destroys the musculature and her neck snaps and her head falls off, which is fine because her vine and cucumber spreading body just wanders around, just spreading them everywhere. Uh, there's a man with a broken neck being dragged forwards by uh, a beard made entirely of pickles. No. Uh, there's some men with giant pickle hands. No. Uh, there is a, there is a, guy on the edge of town uh, fucking a horse who looks into the town and says, serves you right! And he gets on the horse and rides away. A heroic end. Everything is mine. Everything is mine. All of my brothers. Why? God! Because the pickles must be infinite. That's the nature of the pickle barrel. No one ever thinks about an empty pickle barrel. No one's even considered it. And so... The people come, they eat the pickles. I've brought them here. And so they think, oh, you never run out of pickles. And so they never will. And more pickles erupt out of people. They're just being ripped apart from the inside by cucumbers as long as a man. Vinegar as sour as the weeping of Christ. (laughs) Dill as fresh as Will Smith circa 1992. That's (laughs) what I have. For that. <laughs> the pneumatic tubes are starting to curl and like pull some of the buildings together into just one giant single pickle barrel. What? Huh. All right, doo doo. What are you going to do? People are, ter- everyone who has been eating pickles is now just like being con- fucking consumed from the inside. You actually feel fine. And you reflect back and remember you haven't eaten any, eaten any pickles today. Lucky you. What are you going to do though? There, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, there's also a, like a screaming ghost in front of you who is less scary than she used to be, but uh, also Felicity seems to have lost her foot again. Um, Everything happens so much. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Dudu uh, pulls out his cracked iPhone 6 <laughs> and just starts Googling what, what, what makes pickles bad. Oh, sh- I ain't getting any bars. Never mind. Um... All right, <laughs> Dudu throws it away. It's, it's just like a, like a stone slab. Yeah, it, no, it's a cracked iPhone six. <laughs> it's the only one in the world, and it's lost when it's thrown away. <laughs> it will never exist. Never. It, it's immediately crushed underfoot by uh, by one of the mole guys. I look at it like I pulled out a. a, a looked at my bottle of beer. Go, huh? No more of this. <laughs> this phone's empty. This phone's <laughs> empty. <laughs> Okay, the pickle monstrosity. Do I see where that Dylan? He's he's still Dylan. He's not like a big pickle Evangelion or something right now. No, you haven't. You've seen you, buildings have started to move around. Stuff is coming out of people, but you don't you don't see Dylan anywhere nearby. All right. I gotta admit, folks, I feel like we're in a bit of a pickle. <sighs> one of one of the when you say we're in a bit of a pickle, one of the one of the like children who was screaming who was not transformed, uh, hears that is like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know what, you know what, <laughs> not bad. And and as this child laughs, uh, you see the ghost in front of you bleed more. This ain't funny. Turns and lunges towards the child. <laughs> you know what? I, uh, I, I my reaction to that is to pull that. Pull good old conk and finally use put his ass to use. And uh, I just I take the puka shell necklace that conk my retractable uh, Dragon Ball pole <laughs> is uh, is uh, lying around my neck, and I uh, 
I, I, I straighten it out real quick, and then just I want to use it to sort of knock her back from the kid. Yeah, just like hit her with it. Like I'm make- trying to sweep her away as if I was as if I was live at the Apollo, and they had a, they had a bad act on there. I'm trying to sweep her away away from the kid, just instinctively, just right in the gut, just oof. Yeah, you you bring it like, and it's easier because Lipperish is still holding that scorpion tail back. You bring it right into her stomach, and it knocks all of the wind out of her, and she throws up. <laughs> more like more and more of the like people who have not eaten pickles and not are not transforming into nightmares see this, and they're just like, Jesus! I thought there was I thought there was like a ghost here. I thought there was shit. This this lady, this is sad. She looks hurt. <laughs> She's losing the crowd and she's losing the crowd and you're you're looking around in the crowd and when you look back, she's just fucking gone. Like no big exit, no anything. She's there's just there's maybe a hint for a second of something, and then the lipper is just kind of like falls onto the ground. And it's like, oh what we did it! What the Hooray! Where'd she What happened? What happened? You are asking the wrong person, perhaps, but perhaps uh, sustained by an idea, and the idea was broken. I think I just hit her into a thousand million pieces and can't see Yes! It. Hooray for Doodoo! My hero! Get over here, you! Uh, he hops on your shoulder. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I offer my arm so he can come up. Yeah, you <laughs> just just I guess I've given you a second Pokemon, oh. sure. That's what? Very, that's very, yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like. It's my Charmander episode. Yeah, he's 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 <laughs> he's, he's, he's pumping his little tentacles. Yes, yes. Oh no, Felicity. He actually hops down and. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Felicity's <laughs> fucking leg again. Hi guys. The Lipperish, uh, who is like just loves being praised so much, is going to uh, Felicity. You feel an enormous amount of pain, but it's, you know, maybe it's good pain. Who's to say? Before you can really stop it because you're in so much shock, it uses its uh, its vines. It makes them even smaller and smaller and jabs them through the separated, your separated foot and leg and begins to stitch them back together. Whoa. Uh, you, your foot, like, reconnects. It's not, it, it does it, like, really, really fast. <laughs> so see, it's like, it's like panting through gritted teeth. As as this like horrific <laughs> surgery once again is is done on her body. Yeah, uh, gain five hit points back. <laughs> <laughs> are we are we still in? A... Oh, you were still surrounded by cucumber nightmares. Oh, okay, <laughs> and it's but it's Felicity's turn. Felicity, what do you want to do? I want to get back to my feet from being prone. Uh, Lipperish actually like pushes you, helps you stand up, so you don't lose half your movement. You just uh, so that you lose five. There you go. I pull myself back to my feet and I, I give an approving nod to the lip rush. Uh, it does, it gives a little salute. Oh, I love that. That's so cute. Uh, anyway, I'm going to turn and look back out onto the street and see what has begun to transpire. So she's like shielding her eyes from the sun and trying to take stock of whatever horrors seem to have manifested themselves. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Where's Visk? Uh, Velicity, as you're looking out, uh, as you're looking out over this, uh, you see that the people who were running around as cucumber shit, cucumber and vinegar and dill was coming out of them, have all pretty much dropped dead or have like just fallen to the ground and just their bodies are being given over completely to these vines and this vinegar. And as this is happening, like the vines are growing into buildings and the vinegar is flowing upstairs into the buildings and you see that these buildings are becoming they're becoming pickle barrels. Oh no. Have any of you seen Visk? Uh, that's what I was asking. I don't know where the heck he is. What are they doing? Sorry. We've been going back and forth, he and they. Uh, are we just, are we, any pronouns? Yep. He, Visk? they. Is that, both, he, both are fine. I don't know. She sounds weird, but he, they's fine. This is literally <laughs> me. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it, exactly. <laughs> so that's why I didn't call it. That's why I didn't call it. I was like, I, I doubt, you know, I don't give a shit either. Probably same. Uh, it, it just keeps slipping into into he territory. It's like that's fine. I don't know. <laughs> so, so whenever they're being a dick. Uh, when's, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so this you are in the fuzzy pickle. The remains of the barrel are around you, and the room is rapidly filling with cucumber and vinegar. Uh, 
Conceptually, where is Dylan? <laughs> uh, conceptually, Dylan seems to be in a, like all over the place. Everywhere? Yeah, he's probably even over by the dynamite and the silver and the and the wagon wheels and the dynamite, all all kinds of places. Well, since he's everywhere, uh, Visk is going to do this. Something that Visk often carries with them by default is welling up within them, and it's anxiety. And it feels like it can be weaponized. Uh, so Visk aims their psychic intent and unleashes a torrent of conflicting ideas, unlikely hypothetical scenarios, and intrusive thoughts all at once on Dylan, which is all around them, uh, inflicting an anxiety attack. <sighs> and the prevailing thought at the surface is, How could you do this? We thought you were cool, brother. What is your spell save DC? 15. That's pretty fucking high. Okay, let's see. <sighs> he fails. <sighs> so as your as your uh, as this anxiety that you are just letting out of you, uh, it, it's it's demonstrating the importance of putting a pickling weight on your barrel when you're making homemade pickles. Because if you don't, then just the bucket. You need that pressure. You need that to be kept into one location because if you let all of that out then it just gets everywhere and everything smells like vinegar and right now everything smells like your anxiety and all of these buildings just that are moving around just kind of freeze as you have attacked Dylan at his sense of self and his sense of identity which was a cool guy <laughs> uh, he no longer feels like a cool guy and because that is so crucial to his worldview, he is like pull, he pulls all the way back and like comes out back out of the tube to try to convince you that he is indeed a cool guy. You no, you, you you misunderstand. There's more going on here. No, I thought you were cool. I I'm very. No, you don't get it. Look, see. I I, I acted a little sundere about it because I wanted to impress you, and but no, I thought you were cool. I I'm 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 very cool. I'm very cool. In fact, I'm so cool. And he's just a a, a spray of pickles is going to try to spray directly at you. Is that an attack? <laughs> yeah, uh, it misses actually, and just uh, hits. It's uh, lands in a secondary barrel that is behind you. <laughs> My backup barrel. Uh, he's full. He's fully in the barrel now. He's now constrained to this barrel. Uh, it is Dudu's turn. Obviously, something's happening with the pickles. Yeah, Felicity sees the, the pickles everywhere and sees here's the the sounds of things smashing within the room that Dylan is is contained in, and she well, just wordlessly takes off in that direction. I'll I'll follow. I'll go to the pickle zone. Yeah, you roll right into the uh, the fuzzy pickle. What in the heck is going on? Hey, friends. Have you noticed this loser over here? Been at it. Oh. Been noticing him. No, no. Look. Dylan? Look, you don't understand. What's happening just, look, anyway? Here's the thing. I'll tell you what's happening. People need pickles. Not everyone needs pickles, man. No, according to me, they do. I, Give look, it a break. I was some formless thing out in the waste, and then some horrible train came through my infinitude, and I was pulled down into a shitty little barrel to serve empty calories of nothing to nobody. Aha! It was you! It was you the whole time. Yes, I'm the Pickle Man, Dylan. You named me. You gave me the name Pickle Man. You said, I hate the pickle man. I had just distaste for you, and I knew, and I'm glad it's vindicated. And to quote Doodoo once again, I believe it's on site, pickle man. <gasps> ah! Visk uh, draws two dishes and aims it directly at Dylan. Okay. And fires. Uh, well, you pull the trigger and nothing happens. Uh, what? 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 Dude, what what is this? What do you mean? What is what? this? You already fired me. Once? Are you telling me? Yes, he only made one bullet. Are you fucking kidding me? What do you, you need to kill more than once? You you expect to just? What do you mean? Well, guess guess who you didn't kill? Oh, well. The guy I aimed at, Jude. Design flaw, I suppose. Oh, we're going to have a discussion. I did blow a hole in the barrel. I oh, felt that. You are in the doghouse right now. <laughs> <laughs> the holsters, Jude. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's the first gun. Why would there be more than one bullet? Fuck 
fuck you, Cohen. <laughs> It's the first gun and it didn't work. <laughs> Why would he make more bullets for a gun that wouldn't fire for him? I got you so many presents on vacation. Now I'm second guessing. <laughs> Give them all to me. Give them all to me. Yeah, they're all for me and Casey now. Yeah. Yay. This, is, this episode is my present to myself. Yeah, clearly. I'm going to say, you know, this is figure <sighs> we might be able to get more later, but not right, of obviously. Of course Cohen would be a little stinker about this. Of course. I had a feeling that we were really in for it today when the olives came out. Fuck! I turned to the group. Guess who can't shoot this guy? Me! And by extension, my stupid gun that sucks. Look, I think if we just talk about this... Oh. We're way past talking about it. Yeah, we're not talking about anything. Ricochet? Sorry. Uh, you got a sword in your hand still. We got a central pickle for me to chop up, baby? He's all just in one barrel. Mmm... I want to bring my sword down on it vertically and try to split the barrel in half in a way that he cannot continue to collect in it. Let's do it. I am sick of this guy. All right. He cannot move around, so everybody can just do attacks. The free attack rolls right now. There's right. no... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Office space. I'm going to manipulate water to keep him still. I want to wail on that pickle man. I'm it's doing, a, I'm doing it, 11 damage with that cut. Yeah, you like you split right through the new nameplate that says Dylan Pickleman, and it's it falls away to reveal uh, the old one that says uh, Octasio Sour Gums Industrial Pickles. He's, no, no, no. Your name's Octavio. What a loser. There's no response. You look in the barrel. It's empty. God, I hated that guy. I Is there a pickle near me? Yeah, they're, they're fucking all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I am going to just, I'm just going to punch right into one of just a pile of pickles. Yeah, should we be thorough about this? I, I'm, I'm actually on doo-doo side here. Sounds good to me. Look, yeah, I, I, I haven't blown up yet. Let's just start messing pickles up until I do. Yeah, let's just start messing pickles up. All yep. right. Yeah, fuck him up. You know, I thought that guy was cool. He was just another bullshit ghost trying to use me. I fucking hate this. He was using you, and I knew you wouldn't be receptive to it, and I'm sorry I had to threaten you about it. Yeah, me too. Any other way, <laughs> that probably would have gone different, but I also understand if there's one thing I've learned today is people can't... Ah, oh, shit, I'm still in so much pain. He falls over from his bleeding legs. Ooh. Don't worry, we got it. And I just, I just start stepping and punching pickles. Yeah, you, you know what? The three of you uh, in delight, uh, the four of you, and then people start coming back. It becomes a festival. <laughs> the people emerge from their hiding and their terror and yeah. stop the pickles in the street. They pull them up. They pull the roots. They salt the earth where the vines tried to grow. They burn the bodies that were turned into pickle receptacles. Halfway through, some of the bodies start screaming, so they just throw more fuel on. Too late now! <laughs> the pickles are eradicated. And this becomes a festival they do every year, which drives tourism. Yes, exactly! It's a yeah. new festival! People are writing plays to perform at the Grand Theater, which was the only other place that wasn't robbed, but it didn't come up because no one would ever think to rob a theater because, of course, they don't have any fucking money. But maybe now they will with some new plays about pickles. They only have plays there. No money. Mm, that's right. That's all the way to get money. And you three pass on into the night, delighted, destroying. Uh, Hazel says, I just want to thank you three. This is, this is like third or fourth time y'all have seen my life. Maybe the second, but I'm also counting <laughs> multiple times in one instance, so uh, thank you. Y'all are amazing. I gotta say, wow. You're welcome. Didn't think we'd make it out of that one. So are you devils or angels? Good question. Depends who you ask. We just do wet work, kid. Those were the three coolest answers possible. More partying! <laughs> you, uh... <laughs> Plus, we found a bunch of. We, it turns out a bunch of that, a bunch of the stuff in the general store can be used to make food that's not pickles. There was like flour and sugar and stuff. Yeah, I give back the fat back and jerky I never used. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you, it's passed around the other food. It's like, wow, I guess there was a lot of food here we didn't even think about. Yeah, there was bacon there too. Yeah, it was bacon and coffee. I saw uh, the other two eggs come out and are and are made into more fun food with eggs. Uh, I don't know, cakes, sure. Everybody's having a good. Everybody's like a, having yeah. a, like a like a Dutch baby, maybe. Yeah, 
Yeah, all right. Whatever that is sounds good. We're, we're got a frittata coming out in a cast iron pan. We got a Dutch baby coming out. We got some omelets <laughs> coming out. Uh, sunny side up, over easy, over medium, over hard. We got some. We got everything you could possibly want. So it's like the pickle destroying festival that serves like exclusively egg based foods. Mm-hmm. I think this is this is this is the start of a lovely tradition. I think Hazel. I think maybe you're a good mayor. Shit, I, I, I mean. That means a lot coming from y'all. Y'all are clearly good at what you do. Keep up the good work. I'll, I'll try my best. I mean, I guess folks are probably going to be sticking around now. Maybe he'll come back. I'm not going to let that Undertaker come back, though. He's a coward. Anyway, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm sorry. That's the morphine kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, got, he's just got a big bottle of laudanum he's taking nips on. <laughs> That's what we got here in the Old West. Yo, can I have a sip of that? You can have all you want, and you all share around the laudanum. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is having any. I assume Felicity is. Oh, but absolutely. Yeah, everybody's having fun, tucking in. And Felicity, sometime in the night after the frittata's been picked over and the music's dying down, uh, Hazel approaches you. The liprish scuttling up behind. Ever since the festival started, it's been following Hazel around like a new puppy. Uh, Miss Fairweather, when I was. I, I got something I want to talk to you about. If you got a minute, you, you mind stepping around back, around back here? Let's let's, let's go hang. Let's. I think Gardenia would be good com- company for this. Of course, kid. Yeah. Hey, leads you back uh, around behind the mayor's office, uh, where Gardenia is enjoying a huge pile of seed corn that somebody found, and should probably go in the ground, but it's all being salted. So, oh well. When I when I was when I was trying to find that stuff about Scarlet Sizzle Fingers, I, I found something else too and I, I didn't want to show you in front of Visk uh, and he, he hands you another wanted poster it's impossible to tell when it's from uh, unlike the other one this one has the date uh, another poster was just pasted up over it just a local peccadillo and how they put up posters it makes things hard to study later but it reads wanted alive only the calico cutthroat AKA the patchwork purloiner, AKA the silent knife, true name unknown. For grand larceny, theft, abduction of rhyme shell personnel, traffic and unstable artifacts, impersonation of rhyme shell personnel, and corporate espionage, suspected of numerous additional crimes against the rhyme shell corporation. Target is a Catalian woman of calico type, known to favor leather gear and edged weapons. Target is intelligent and highly skilled in social engineering and hand-to-hand combat. Carries a variety of concealed blades, incapacitate on possible sighting. Do not wait to confirm identity. Known associates, the Cosa Gostra crime family. Bounty, 20,000 smackaroos. There is no photograph, but there is a rough composite sketch of a Catalian woman who looks exactly like you. This is... Yeah, so I don't know if that's like your grandma or you or time. I don't know really what y'all's deal is fully, but, you know, it just seemed like it, something you might be interested in. And I don't know. It is. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you. So. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm. Hey, what's that? Uh, you hear a beep. Uh, uh, Felicity looks around at first. Then you hear another beep. Oh, Oh, no. Yeah. Right next to your badge that you still have. uh, There it is. It's that little red bump. And it is beeping faster and brighter. Hazel says, what's that? Can I help? And he he walks up to you. You you actually can. She quickly rolls up the uh, one imposter. Need a hand? Hold this for me. I'll be right back. And she just takes off running away from them as quickly as she can and away from the center of town out into the desert wastes. Yeah, it's it's a one street town. So it doesn't take long to get far enough just in time before you explode and your soul is sent tumbling cascading back down to ghost town after felicity slips away the festival continues on into the night at some point doo visits the outhouse and after a few minutes a confused relieved looking vulture comes waddling out on its talons vomiting chunks of undigested licorice before flapping off towards the desert 
and at some point, Visk slurps their way back to the clean sink at the Undertaker's and disappears down the drain. And so ends the tale of Scarlet Sizzlefinger and the Wicked Pickle Man, defeated by our heroes, the Skull Tenders. It wouldn't be the last time they saved Scrubfuck, but that's a story for an- Oh, you're awake! Oh, I'm sorry. You just seemed so cozy when I found you here in the corner of the Brex of Ken. I decided to just whisper the conclusion to the tale into your ear while you were sleeping. It's nice to have a big, simple win every now and then, wouldn't you say? Things don't always shake out that smoothly, you know. Sometimes the mission comes with strings attached. You've just heard Amber Carr as Felicity Fairweather, Casey Green as Doodoo the Owl, and Chess O'Brien as Visk. Skulltenders is game mastered by Cohen Edenfield, with original music composed by Seth Boyer. Editing and sound design by Jess O'Brien. We hope you'll consider supporting us on Patreon, where you can find all sorts of chilling and original bonus content, including an after-show dedicated to each episode. And if not, well, we get everyone in the end. You excited about any part of the road trip? Well, we'll get the van started. What, do you think it's like cursed or something? Come on now. Did you That's just crazy. ask me if a car is cursed? And we can read the puss cards. I found these in the glove box of the van. I'm Marlon sure has a face nothing. of like, this is cursed. I think they're all from your eternal light. If anybody wants to play any games, we can play Pad Diddle. Let me finish shoving this Tesla off the little ledge here into a hole. The horse's name is D'Artagnan. Ah, oh, Jimmy loves this town, baby! Don't stop in this town, you'll die! We can take turns seeing which states we see on license plates. And you see that the whole head has just been disintegrated. Falls out a similar looking to worm. Get this f***ing thing off me! And we can sing songs. Now keep your mouth shut! Keep, Look well, down! Don't don't keep your mouth shut! shut. Man, hold on, shut hold on, hold on, hold on. And eat snacks. Oh, oh, now hold on now. That's, that is deeply unpleasant. Oh my, what is that? I take out my bat and I start hitting it. It doesn't say don't put it in your mouth. It says don't let it in your mouth. That's what I usually do in the car, but by myself. But I can do it together now. I'm right excited. About it. Oddity Roadshow is an actual play podcast using the Monster of the Week system that you can find wherever you get your podcast. Or go to oddityroadshow.com for more information.